ready whenever. Hey, let's, hey, let's start the show. <laughs> it's November 14th, 2014. Welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. I'm Will Smith. Seated directly to my left in his uh, usual position, Norman Chan. Hello. I really, really like uh, the thing that we don't talk about on the show anymore. We What's have two. That? We don't talk about t-shirts anymore. Uh, we got People got tired of it and started complaining on the internet. So we stopped talking about the t-shirts <laughs> we were wearing on the Good. audio podcast. I, I can't say that. I didn't steal Norm's seat this time. No, no. It's, it's, it's fine. You're welcome to steal Norm's seat anytime you want. Lloyd Case is here, directly to Norm's left. Hello there. Uh, and the, this is the first time we've had a four-seat podcast in a while. Jeremy Williams is to my right. Hi. Hello, Jeremy Williams. Special podcast. Make it up for last week. We had a really short podcast last week. As I think, was it even an hour? Maybe it was an hour and like three almost seconds. Almost an hour. Yeah, sacrilegious. Um, because we had to uh, run to catch a flight down to to LA for ah. some cool stuff. Um, so making up for this week with double the guests. Double pod. It's a big news week too. So there's a lot to talk about. Um, what were we doing in LA last week, Norm? Uh, we we're shooting talking room videos. Uh, we did one on Thursday, and we did one this this week. On Monday, those will be going up in the next month or so. Uh, I think we can say who they are. The one that's going up first, let's talk about that one first, because that one's coming up probably next week if everything goes well, was with Vince Gilligan, who's the creator of Breaking Bad. Um, Breaking Bad! Oh my god, it's the best TV show ever! Um, he was really interesting. They talked about how, like, making, like, Adam talked to him about what the process of creating a TV show is. Like what, what the writers, how they work in the white writer's room, the kind of rules that they follow and how consensus comes and all that. It was interesting to see that from another side rather than as just a pure consumer of, of that content. Um, so, yeah, we've got a ton of news this week. Uh, hold on. This was the first time I've flown since they instituted the new FAA policies. Oh, I thought, I thought you were going to go a different direction with that, but I'll let you go this one. What was I, I going to say? No, 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 no. Let's do the FAA policy thing. Well, what, what did you think I was going to do? I, I'm going to, I will You're going to elaborate. After, after, okay. after you Did finish. the flight attendants make a big to-do about it? So, yeah, I, I actually, on my flight, the first flight down, the one to, to the Gilligan shoot on last Tuesday, I actually asked the flight attendant, because I figured it's probably been real bad for them, because we flew on Virgin, which, which I think there's only two airlines so far that have instituted the new FAA policy. So that's Delta and WestJet, maybe, or JetBlue. I can't remember. Somebody, somebody small. JetBlue sounds right. Um, we, the flight attendant, I said, I, I was on early on the plane, and I asked her if it had been a nightmare for them, because I was like, I'm sure, you know, I, I asked, should I leave my book, my paper book out, or should I, can I keep the Kindle out? And she's, she was like, well, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want on the airplane. I was like, oh, so you guys have the new electronics rules. Oh, she's like, no, absolutely not. You have to have the electronics off during takeoff. I said, has that been really bad for you? And she said, yes, it has been a really, really unfortunate last two weeks because you get on the plane and people read the New York Times. And the New York Times says, hey, you can use your Kindle on the plane now. Nick Bilton says, I can use my right. Kindle below 10,000 feet. Why can't I use my Kindle? So I gave her Nick Bilton's feet. Twitter address and personal email and said, hey, if you have complaints about it, you should email this guy because he's the one who made this happen. Um, it's, she said, so we, and then on the flight back, we watched it happen on Monday. There was a guy sitting, sitting next to me in the plane who wouldn't turn his phone off. And she had to be like the flight attendant was a fucking hard ass on him. She came down on him like a ton of bricks and was like, look, you can you can either turn your phone off and we'll take off on the on the airplane or you cannot turn it off. And I'll call the airport security and they'll the haul you off and you'll go to jail. It's your choice. Has anyone ever sat next to the air marshal? Uh, you don't know. Probably. It's very it's a good thing to be accusatory of. What are you there, Marshall? Are you there, Marshall? You have you'd have to tell you're me if you're the air marshal. Are they air marshal? You're the I don't know. They don't have to tell you. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't have to tell you. Narks. Um, there, there's probably a profile for the air. The air marshal probably. You know, I, I bet they have mustaches. Read a uh, Ron Swanson looking dude. Nick Offerman looking dude. No carry on. Um, no carry on. Reads paper magazines like. Um, Something with eye holes in it. Actually, yeah. probably a five foot four inch redhead. Never that's probably it. that's probably or grandmotherly type right with a wig right um that was a bit in bridesmaid wasn't it it was a bit in bridesmaid okay 
Um, Melissa McCarthy and her husband. That's right. Oh, that was her real husband? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really funny. I didn't know that. Um, let's talk about tech news. There's a ton of stuff. Can you show me down? <laughs> yeah, <this is> like <laughs> I'm getting yelled at every time you speak. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeremy. Oh, it's much better. Okay. Thank you. Am I too loud? Is that the problem? Um, the iPad mini came out in a real secret way uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. Day before yesterday? Wasn't Mon that weird? Yeah, so they just... Well, they always said th that was the day they would launch it. I mean, no, no, they didn't. No, they said that it would become later. It would come later in November, but they never set a date. And, and when I they remember said seeing a date. There actually. was no, there was yeah. no date. Uh, when Ap it was October 25th, I believe, was the Apple event. They said November 1st. About six days after for the air for the air, which is their right. typical F FCC mm -hmm. shrunk down time condensed time, condensed time because they had made as many as those as they could already. Um, you know, October twenty second, whatever. Uh, and then they said later November, which we all took to mean maybe the last day of November. I figured right. it's or, typical Apple, but they can't be. It couldn't be the last day of November because they couldn't miss the big sh biggest shopping weekend of Black the year Friday. in, the, in the U.S., which is not the biggest shopping day in the world. What's the biggest shopping day in the world? It's. Uh, no, Boxing Day is the after and Christmas. Christmas. No, no, not, not, not remotely. The biggest shopping day in the world is uh, being a, a Forever Alone Day in China. What's Forever Alone Day? There's, or maybe Korea. Uh, there's it's some Asian country. I'm not sure which one. I think it's China because I think it's I know what you're talking about. Right. There's, a, there's some weird tradition where people celebrate uh, being alone or being single, and it's like symbolized. It's 11, 11, 11. That's what it is. No, it's it's eleven eleven. I'm gonna look it up. It's called it's Forever November Alone Day. No, I, I think it's called that. It's called eleven. Uh, it's on November eleventh every year because it's the single. The yeah. one is like being alone. Yeah, especially two years ago. And um, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, and people just buy stuff. It's a big shopping holiday. Wow. So you go out and buy something to make yourself feel better about your status as a yes. Forever Alone. That's like me every single day. I That's buy stuff. This is you. F you well, fill the void in your feel, life. Feel, feel better with uh, with things. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if this is true anymore, but one time. Computer companies, and includes like the graphics card guys and all the com companies that make computer components, their biggest shopping day of the year was when these grocery stores in Europe would bring in PCs by the boatload and stack them everywhere and sell them for like 500 bucks. Really? Yeah, and people just flood the markets and buy these things. I bought my first PC at a Walmart. That was a horrible mistake. <laughs> it was a really bad PC. Well, we're talking brand name stuff too, a lot of cases. Right. Well, I got a Wang. So. Oh, uh, wang. before we jump to the. Uh, it's called Black Day, by the way, in South Korea. People, black single people, day? get together and eat uh, noodles with black bean sauce, and sometimes a white sauce is mixed in for those who did not celebrate White it, Day. It, I don't know what White Day is. I'm gonna have to look <laughs> that up now. Wow. That's on March 14th. No, no, that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Black Day is November 11th. November 11th, biggest shopping day of the year in okay. the world. So, was it released in Korea? The iPad Mini. Right they now? missed it. Because they, they, did. they didn't even make 11, 11 No, they didn't. Oh, my God. No. Uh, I want to step one f step back because I had the thing that I thought Will was going to say uh, about, about getting the on airplane? the pl airplane was this was the first time that we had taken a flight on Virgin America with the debut of the new song. Oh, my God. The what? new safety video. Oh, the new safety video. Okay. So what was your reaction when you saw the new safety video on the arms on the, internet? on the internet? Yeah. Head shake, arms folded. Uh, coincidentally, <laughs> the, same, the same reaction I had when listening to the new safety video while on the plane. So, you know, Virgin, folded, head shake. Virgin has traditionally had a pretty good safety video. It's a it's like a animated cartoon, black and white cartoon. It has like a kind of okay. condescending English narrator. And he, it's not English. He's he not sounds English. He sounds fake nope. English. Nope. He sounds like Madonna. No, um, no, 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 no accent. No, no accent. Just a very calm. I remember. Like, no, no, friendly no, no. Neighborly Norm, type. Norm, you, you're saying as an American, no accent. Does somebody else, he has an accent. No English <laughs> accent. Okay. Um, the story behind the Virgin America, the original safety video, which it's almost like a, it's animated like a Red Bull commercial, a little bit. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, they went through a lot of hoops to get that approved by the FAA because FAA previously was used to this, the, the, uh, the, uh, the videotape you had to, ones. You, well, or you, yeah, the FAA had to approve all the videotape ones. They'd never done that. Like, typically the videotape ones were just a person, an actor dressed as a flight attendant, standing up and doing right. all the stuff that they used to do on the, on the, Nothing in the center aisle. In, in my mind, will ever beat the Air New Zealand Lord of the Rings video. Wait, for. what? New Zealand? Yes. Air one? New Zealand had a video where they had, they used Lord of the Rings references everywhere in their takeoff and landing videos. It was awesome. Oh, wow. It's, you can find it on YouTube. So do they have hobbits and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh. Did they bring out and an Elevensies snack? And sheep. Oh, that's great. Well, and what is Gandalf. Yeah, that's it's kind of <laughs> like at certain airports when they theme the airport security oh, line like video 
for like LA, they have a lot of Disneyland stuff, or Las Vegas, they have a lot of the characters of Las Vegas, Blue Man Group, yeah, uh, even Wayne Newton, Star Trek Experience. A lot of stuff is very dated now. Um, <laughs> yes, but uh, the original version of America video went through a long approval process just to get to and set a big precedent for what they could. Uh, what they could get away with, but there were hundreds of revisions to it, and it, and they they explained that as why there aren't very there weren't variations of that initial video, so you see a different one every time. Um, but it had it like instead of having somebody showing you how to buckle a seatbelt, it showed a, a Toriador who wasn't good at buckling seatbelts. For and the he was point the zero zero one percent of you who don't, don't know how to buckle. That's the guy's voice. That's yeah, nice. Is that right? I've heard it so that's many it. times. Are you the voice artist? <laughs> <laughs> it's like ingrained oh in my, my head. God. Okay. Norm's the voice. Um, so um, and, and it was real clever, it, 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 enjoyable experience. The first very, 20 times very, it was very, clever. Very memorable. Okay. Uh, still easy to fall asleep to. Yes. Um, which is important. And the new one, uh, oh, which they debuted online, I want to say two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, uh, <sighs> directed by John M. Chu, the director of uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation, well, Step Up 2 and 3, everything. and the Justin Bieber movie. Uh, he's also directed the next Fast and Furious movie. Oh no! Um, oh no! And, and, and he directed all these uh, the Surface commercials, the Microsoft Surface RT commercials he's, last year. This I, I've the, never hated anyone more in my it, life. <laughs> he's actually a family friend. Oh okay, well um, I mean, I'm sure he's very nice, but this is going to be an awkward Thanksgiving. It was. Uh, <laughs> it's very dancey, so he's he's very it, in it tune is. with the dance uh, community, the uh, oh, New boy. York dance community. It's an upbeat dance number featuring show tunes like singing and multiple different types of, of, of things that will become gimmicky incredibly fast. So the, the it video, is instantly dated. The new video is like a music video. It's a song with different beats and a chorus. No, no. It's like a music video of a Broadway show. Sounds like a horror. And it's yeah. a minute longer. Four than, minutes and 35 than seconds. Than the current one. I timed it the third time. <laughs> um tries to bring back some of the beats of the the video that we know from Virgin America so it has yeah. the uh, the nun the gadget nun except she's not putting away her router it's she's all on live her cell phone, except it's all, all live action. and it's filmed in a um, it, there's no bull in a warehouse with a fake with, with a, you know rows of seats that are more spacious spaced out than any airplane I've ever sat on <laughs> um, and people are dancing and there's like a yoga th- instructor inexplicably moving her legs above her head it's real weird and then there's a bunch of rapping children there's a there's a robot dance. There's a there's, robot dance. Uh, the, the robot dance, and, and every single one of these segments, because there's one that corresponds with the seatbelt, one corresponds. Just so like all the bad cliches of bad music videos thrown into one thing. It's pretty grim. And <laughs> thousands upon thousands of people are watching this every day now on Virgin America flights, and they're all complaining. I feel so bad for the flight attendants. Oh my god. Oh, also, we'll also, hold on. It. It's also super earwormy. So it oh, sticks with you for the rest it, of the day. It, it's Joey's. Uh, it's Joey's new ringtone. Somebody made it their ringtone. Somebody made it their ringtone. Way to narc on Joey. It's, it's <laughs> been the the four different like, songs within that video have been stuck in my head at different points. So I've had the robot dance one stuck in my head. I've had the main chorus stuck in my head. At some point, you li- you look up and you're like, oh, thank God. The thank you for flying with us. Enjoy the sky or whatever the song is. You're like, oh, it's gone. And then, and then you realize that the thing that replaced it is another version of the song from inside the song. It's like the little kid telling you not to smoke on the airplane. <laughs> Do we really need people telling us not to smoke on the airplane? FAA regulations. Oh, my God. It's, it is. At one point on one of the – I don't remember which flight it was. The guy sitting next to me looked over and was like, this is really bad, isn't it? And I said, yes. He was on the, the, <laughs> the flight back on terrible. Monday, and the guy um, – yeah, he was, he, was not, he was not amused. I wonder if this is going to actually lose them customers. I, I, I am like it is. I like Virgin because the seats are big and normal. Like typically they have people who fly a lot, fly Virgin. So you right. don't have to deal with like somebody bringing three oversized suitcases in and all that nonsense. Right. Food and drink when you want it. I don't care about that. Oh, I don't eat on the plane. Oh, I love that part. I don't know. That's the best part. Um, the 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 video might be enough to push me over the edge and go back to United because United's rolling out planes with with power and all the power is the other good thing about Virgin. That's a, that's I'm not a sure there's anything that can America. make me go back to United. Um, the, the, the thing that ties into what Will was saying about the FAA and the electronics is that in the video, along with the old version video, uh, they talk about putting away your electronics, but that the policy nun. has changed. Yeah. And they obviously commissioned and produced this new music video 
before the FAA well, the new regulations. But it sounds like from what you've been talking about, the policy is changing airline by airline, so it's not necessarily. It's not airline by airline. It's a it's no. It's a, airline by airline. Well, they have to get it approved airline by airline. Yeah. But it is a it, FAA policy. Until your until the airline you are on supports the new rules right. and has their messaging corrected, right. I, then the old rules are in place. Version and will get the new rules. Yeah. There are FAA inspectors going around to make sure that nobody breaks the rules. Is what the flight attendant told me. Which sounds like bullshit, but it, you know who that's knows. bullshit. Right. Anyway, the, the vast majority is, of planes are approved uh, are, are, te- are capable to be approved. Oh, it's not a technical problem. It is a messaging problem. The 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 other thing, the thing, all the whole point of talking about this was that I just wanted to tell people to be nice to the flight attendants because, like, just because the FAA rules have changed doesn't mean it's changed for your airline. And the like, nobody should fuck with flight attendants. They have yeah. a rough job. And you it will should eventually go, change, but yeah. right now it's still not universal. You just you take should go watch that, magazine. Watch that Virgin America Don't. safety video. Oh, God, it's so you. bad. Do it. it I'm, I'm flying Virgin in a week and a half, and I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I'm on the plane. Enjoy to see this the thing. show. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. Now. The very how does the first song, time. How does the song go? I don't know. I don't know the tune. I don't know the. Virgin America knows all the places you want to be. Fly away with me. Fly away. It's a. It's a. This sounds like the soundtrack for an early Miyazaki movie. Kind of does. Mm, no, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah, not it like Kiki's delivery service. No, 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 no. It's 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 it's, it's grim. Okay. Um, should we talk about tech news? Um, <laughs> are we done talking about nonsense? <laughs> We're only like thirty minutes. In. Oh, at the end, the very first time, I think it was last Wednesday, when I first heard it on the flight back from LA. It wasn't there on, on the flight to LA. Really? But the flight back from LA. Oh, it was, it was on was the there. flight there for me because I came the next day. Uh, so I think it was actually implemented ah. last Thursday, the first first day. Someone tried to slow clap after. Oh, <laughs> really? Like they tried to at, at the end of the video. This girl's like sarcastic yeah. clap, like no, sarcastic no. clapping, or no. like legit, like teen high wow. school movie slow clap, slow clap. Wow, okay. that was the flight with all the USC students. Can we talk tech? If it's really this bad, it won't last. I, I just yeah, it's it's pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, well, let's talk tech. Uh, iPad Retina. Um, iPad Mini with Retina. iPad Mini with Retina. Uh, stealth released on Tuesday night, even. Yeah, so there was a story on Apple Insider or Mac Rumors or something that said, hey, it's going to come out on the 12th. And it was like, ah, you, pff, It was whatever. a leaked internal Apple email. Yes. Um, so you guys have one, right? We have oh, two. So if you had yeah. bought it online on the 12th, so it was not available Which in I stores did. for walk-in, it said uh, for the Wi-Fi estimate shipping one to three days, depending right. on the model. Well, um, or cellular, up, five to 10 days. So the 64 128s were five to 10. Depending on the model. Well. Yeah. And uh, if you bought it like the day after, they actually ship them from China to you because they go directly right. from, uh, from the manufacturer. Um, but the next day, Apple stores received them. So does three ounces in weight difference make a difference? Well, you both, can feel both, it. Both Jeremy and Will have them right in front of them right now i didn't bring my old one with me i didn't even think about that today i here it's, just, it's not three ounces different 16 well it's 1.05 pounds versus 13 ounces no no no, no. no. you're thinking it's, of the main the that's big the air. Air. No, 1.05 is air yeah right right this. no no that's what i'm saying it's oh just three you're ounces saying make it oh, okay. i thought you meant between well, the old mini and the new no one. no, no i meant between the air and the mini well here's okay, the, so the here's the, the mini yeah, see this is that's one handleable and here's the more chunky yeah see it doesn't feel that different and this feels kind of chunky because it's denser. It's denser. That it's, density it is, matters. It is noticeably heavier, but not super noticeably heavier. Right. The difference is you can hold this one handed like this for an extended period of time, and you can't hold that one handed. I could. Yeah. I mean, I, I found it uncomfortable. Can't you rest your hand on your if, knee? If you rest your hand on anything, it works. But if you're standing there holding, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, so they rolled it out. You ordered at midnight or 9 o'clock the next morning or t- 10 o'clock the day after. And it was like one to three days shipping. People um, like Gary, who bought it online, have estimated delivery date of the 20th, uh-huh. November 20th. <laughs> While if Will, who bought it the, the, the hour it was put online, Five minutes after right. it went online. Uh, on Tuesday night, had, could cancel his order as early as yesterday, Wednesday, and go in store and pick it up. As opposed to the Air, which I ordered online on a Friday and got it on Monday. And Air, if you walked in the store that Friday morning, like yeah, I you did, could, you can buy them there. Yeah. Ninety seconds, walked in and picked the fuck yep. out. Yeah, I guess Apple stores aren't even taking walk-in. They are not. For this. You have to order it on the website so and pick it up. So here's how the Apple punditry online is t- spinning this. Uh, this is great for Apple because they have oh, constrained Jesus. supply, and because of constrained supply, they are appeasing the fans who browse sites like Apple Insider who know about who know it first. The evangelists. Uh, uh, like that side of the room. So I don't think that this side is, I don't think that that's necessarily like, I don't think that that's a bad thing. 
Um, it, it's I don't bad understand. from a sales point perspective because they're not going to get the big launch that they that they typically get. I'm totally. You know what? I'm totally fine oh, which, with which I, is them not doing the bullshit supply constrained fakes constrained constrained so supply thing so that everybody it, lines up outside the mall. Oh, this is a legit supply constrained thing. Well, I, you I, know what? This is a much better way than having a bunch of people line up outside the mall. I this year, I don't know about you. I haven't waited outside a mall at all. It's great. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm saying from the user experience, great. I'm saying from the Apple perspective, the the pundits are saying this is great for Apple. They they probably won't, wouldn't have sold as many as if they had a big, you know, announcement day. If they and, don't and, have and, as many to sell, they'll sell. If they're limited supply, they will sell all of them. And that they, they have. are selling all of them. They have the other thing that this lets them do, which is why I assume they do it, is that is that this lets them manufacture to order. Rather than manufacture um, and well, guess what I, people are going to want. No, their supply uh, no, no, chain I th is. I think it's. I think the problem is that they're supp they're they're supply constrained on certain components. Right. There's so this means that they can take if they're supply constrained on screens and CPUs, right. then they put the CPUs on the boards that have the right memory configuration. They'll sell the others later, the, the, and then they f blow they the screens and ship them. That. Uh, their their something I read uh, recently. How long does was, it take to make an iPad Mini? Is it like no. five days to no, no, actually no. make one? Oh, well, like if you have all the components minutes? in a bin, yes. Yeah, if so they if you order it, your... it's made. Yeah. It's it's been made. They they do no, nothing is made to order unless it is like the Mac Pro. What if it's engraved or engraved? Which you can get the iPad. Yes, you can get the iPad Mini engraved. But when you're talking about millions of units, uh, the, Apple's efficiency in projecting how much yeah, they'll sell I, I really think, and how many yeah. units are in stores is one of the reasons they are so right. profitable. I think that, that Apple's just managing supply. I mean, they're just doing this to manage supply. And when, if the supply constraints come off in the component that they're probably having problems with, probably the screen, Yeah, they'll just show up magically in stores. I so think it's actually the Ace. It might be the, the processor. Well, they don't seem to have problems selling phones and iPad Air. Well, they're, they're splitting. They're splitting. They're splitting between three three different products. Uh, the same. Haven't process. some uh, some news outlets said that it is the screen that yeah. it, there were issues with what they called ghosting, although it wasn't perceptible to humans. It wasn't up to Apple standards. And it's two manufacturers for the screen. It's LG and Sharp. Oh, and now they might be going to Samsung for extra help. Um, I don't know. It's, it seems like it's a, it's a very similar screen to the iPhone five and five S in terms of pixel density and size. It's it's uh, basically it's a, it's the same it's pixel a lot size. bigger than the 5 uh, Sorry, pixel size, not okay. dense. I'm talking about density, right. like resolution per inch yeah. and all that. Um, we'll talk about like hands-on and stuff like that. Jeremy and I both had a couple of days with them at this point um, in what we've been testing. But that's out. You can order it now, pick it up at the store. It, it seems like the store supply is pretty limited. Only one of the Apple stores in our area. And they're them. doing, uh, because they're still selling the old um, Mini without Retina screen, then in store they will have them side by side for people. Yeah, to they had them side by side in the store I was at yesterday, and and there was a really great moment where the, the genius and the guy that were looking at them were looking at two Retina Minis and couldn't tell the difference between them <laughs> <laughs> because the, the because there was no difference because there was them. no difference between them. One was white, one was black. Um, but the but the the that's better than him finding a difference. He, I suppose so. Yeah, <laughs> um, as we know. From you know audio files, you can always find a difference, even where there isn't. Listen one. hard <laughs> enough, and it's there. Exactly. Um, PS4 reviews hit yesterday, last night. I guess the embargo on the New York PlayStation launch event was up. Um, there's two things to talk about here. I don't know if we want to get into one of them, but I, I, I mean, I think it's well established what our policy tested on early reviews of incredibly complex products is. Especially incredibly complex products. It depends on content that hasn't shipped yet. That's another thing I wanted to mention, taking another step back, uh, with the Mini Retina. I know that Apple gave out the, the early reviewers, because early reviewers, other sites get, just, get just access. I, I, get, I get to do one step back. It's fine. Throughout the every, entire every, chain. Every time. Wait, just I, wait I got, to, I just, wait to I talk got, about what yep. you want to talk about until we move on, and then we'll go um, back. What I love is that uh, early reviewers usually get products you know, a week in advance, and they sign NDAs, and then th there's a big embargo, and all their reviews get lifted. And this time, because of the stealth launch, uh, the embargo for reviews, I expect, and I, I'm pretty sure about this, was after Tuesday. I think it was last night. It, it was last. It was this morning. Yeah. Um, and so people were able to buy iPad Minis, like Jeremy and Will were able to buy them, and write whatever they want about them before the people who got early access were able to write what they want. And one, I, I just saw one person broke an embargo and wrote their quick impressions. Well, they're on the list. And uh, nah, I think this person's uh, Who in good standing. Name names. Um, 
and was had it the had, Verge one. No, it wasn't the Verge one, okay. and had to go back and change it to a first look. That's f- such bullshit. Um, I found uh, I found pleasure in that. So the PS4 reviews are out. The early reviews, um, people do not seem whelmed. <laughs> well, and and that's not surprising. Right, I mean, it's an underpowered PC. Oh, were they not whelmed <laughs> by the the uh, gentleman Lloyd case? <laughs> The quality of games, or the, n- the number of games, or it's well, so a- it, it, has, it has the problems of any early console release. There aren't very many games. Yeah, uh, the ones that are out are typically not very good because early launch games are always not very. Or good. Or they're ports of PS3 games right. that, that were good games, but you know, you don't see. We've played different. Flower before. Yeah, and I think the same is going to be true for Xbox One when that yeah. finally goes too. Um, so I mean, I, like, there's I I had I I made a snarky comment and then ended up having a lot of really interesting conversations yesterday about about this and i mean there are a couple of ways to look at reviewing stuff that's this that's that's as amorphous as a console at launches or even right. before launches mm-hmm. um one is to kind of look at what's in the box and what you get as a value perspective as a you know hey i'm paying 400 dollars for this thing is this worth 400 dollars right now and that answer is probably always going to be no i mean it should be Right at launch. Given given yeah. what you have in the box at launch and mm-hmm. what the game's situation is, and right. knowing that uh, two years from now it'll probably be three hundred dollars and there'll be a ton of games out, right? Or yeah. even a year from now. And all of the stuff that's out now, the one thing that you might want to play will probably be half price, right. or less. So um, I, I and pro- it'll be eventually four ninety nine on Steam on the PC. I don't think Killzone will ever be four ninety nine right. on Steam on the PC, but but Killzone will undoubtedly be free if you sign up for PlayStation Plus. Right. So. Um, yeah, I mean it's the the console pre order thing is tough. Like I we order them for for this we have them to do reviews and stuff and probably take some apart um, for the office. But I can't imagine kind of like I, I don't I have personal pre orders for both consoles and I think I would probably cancel them. Thinking about canceling them before the I did cancel my order, but they shipped anyway. Well, congratulations. Yeah, you, you don't have much time to cancel the PS4. The PS4 is on the way. But yeah. that, we'll use those. No, I canceled work. my PS4 order like a week and a half ago, so <laughs> they had some plenty of time to process. Oh wow, the really? Yeah. Maybe they well, you know, they had those pallets. They probably shipped the labels on from the factory or something. Maybe that's it. The, um, the highest rated game I've seen reviewed is the uh, digital download. That's the Super Stardust or uh, uh, Resogun. Resogun. Yeah. Yeah, that's super particle-y and it's pretty. Defender, but but super stardustified. Yeah, it's been getting good scores, but that's the best, and it's the downloadable. It's not the Killzone hey, killer app. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, the best thing I played on my Xbox 360 in the first six months was probably until Dead Rising came out was Geometry Wars. Oh, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah, and Hexic was a close second. And I don't know if you saw, uh, who was it, Jimmy Kimmel? Somebody had... Um, uh, Michael Bolton on last night, and along with Ice T, and they. Oh, it was uh, Conan. Conan, was it? Yeah, Conan Ice T on. Oh no no, no it was, it's the, uh, the dude Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. That's who it is. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, they, he's hip. The only thing that they showed at the PS4 was a bunch of uh, camera games. That was the most <laughs> impressive thing. The I to- oh the iToy Double Fine. So Double Fine created an iToy bundle. Is that is that coming out? I didn't think I it was th- ready. I. Th- thought that was on the no, disc I think this launch. was an internal one with a bunch of robots that are inside the controller and then you can throw out onto the floor and then like it maps them onto your floor and then you can kick them and play with that them. That sounds crazy. And uh, yeah, it's, it looks kind of Oh, it's the playroom. I think Double Fine's just making the DLC DLC for it. Uh, I mean, this is really this is really cool tech. I mean, it, it made me more excited about the camera than I ever thought I would be. So Playroom will be installed Double Fine's doing um, DLC for it. So that is probably not the double fight stuff. Right. I just showed you my Gmail password, my, my one use password, Jeremy. Meanwhile, the it's guys at the Oculus said that they'll never run on a console. Really? Yes. Oh, I missed that. Yes, it's a PC thing only. Wow. Well, or an, Andro- or an Android thing. Well, or an iPhone. Thing. Well, PC, PC running might be a PC running Android, but it's, it's definitely not. I mean, they said that the console is not powerful enough for it. Well, I mean, that, that <laughs> actually seems about right. <laughs> Um, there's been a lot of controversy. We, have, we didn't really talk about the resolution stuff, um, but there's been a lot of controversy about resolution, native resolutions, or the resolution the games are running, frame rates that they're running at, A levels, and all that stuff with both. I, I think, think that came a out lot of, of that is a mountain and a molehill. Yeah, Making I mean, a mountain out of a molehill, excuse me. Well, because it's one of those things, 
I, I know from my experience, if you're running at one resolution with mad mad AA, AA cranked all the way up, right. it's really hard to tell the difference. Like the thing you notice is frame rate judder, not resolution. Stuff like that, I can kind of see on my PC when I'm running. When you you're know, three feet away from the monitor, exactly. But when I'm eight feet away on a on a 60 inch screen, sometimes you just can't tell that it's running 720p but, versus 960p versus 1080p. But you well, can always tell frame rate. Tell. What's that? 540 looks bad. Oh, well, yes, of course. And especially if I it's... Y and you can also tell if Except it's that I have DVDs that scale up on my... D on my yeah. And, I, and it looks great. It, it so. depends on the scaler. Yeah, if... if I, it, I mean, that, this is the thing we've said since the very launch of these consoles, is if the scalers are good, then it kind of doesn't matter what resolution you well, run. Well, if this has sort of a bunch of Radeon cores in it, the scaler should be pretty decent. Right. Bo and both of them have a bunch of Radeon cores, right. in theory. Right. Well, the question is, do they have the, the video um, scaling unit that... The Radeon graphics. Oh, right. right. Well, we will find out yeah. shortly, I'm sure. Um, anything else on the PS4 front? People seem to really like the controller. Are I'm waiting until we talk about the next topic. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't have anything to say about um, PS4, actually. Hey, guys. Uh, IBM is making Watson, you know, the Jeopardy playing supercomputer, available for everyone. Norm, do you have any thoughts on the PS4? No. Are you sure? Yeah. The po Polygon had a cool review of it uh, the, with, the, with the vector with vector art. The vector Which, art was really cool. You mean the, the website is, itself? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. 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 Which I like the response on Rock, Paper, Shotgun to that review. That was pretty neat. Man, see you that. are perfect for that, Lloyd. <laughs> Which, Rock, Paper, Shotgun is the trolliest PC game site uh, Yeah, so on they the did internet. this thing that was kind of a spoof of I the like Polygon. I like Rock, Paper, Shotgun. Yeah, they had a spoof of the Polygon animated thing. That was pretty I funny. I live with the guy who writes for it, and I'm not a big fan. <laughs> mm. I, they're all right. No, it's going to be really awkward at home and Thanksgiving now. <laughs> um, what did they say? Which rock paper shotgun? I didn't oh, see it. it was just it was just what they didn't say much. It was just a spoof animation that's taking spoofing polygons. Oh, their animation. parallax thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. They're delivering ads under that parallax now, which I don't know how I feel about. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh, Watson's API is available for anyone if you want to pay IBM to use it. So there are people that are going to be using Watson to parse natural language for like shopping sites and stuff like that. Okay. Um. I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know. The computer that won Jeopardy. The computer that won Jeopardy. It's all timing, Jeopardy, you know. I didn't know. Everybody always knows all the answers. The people that are up there, they always know the answers. The question is who buzzes in first. And when can you buzz in? As uh, soon as Alex as soon stops as talking? Yes. So, no, no, it's not that. There's a, there's a button that Alex hits when he finishes or he lets his hand off of or something. And oh. it's when that happens that you can answer. Wow. That you can, you can click it's in. It's a dead man switch. And there's a penalty. Like if you click too much before... Then there's a penalty, but there's a there's a. You mean there's you can't click twice in a row too fast. I I think that it is like lags there's you out. There's a penalty if you click before. Before, yeah. But you could, that's why they you see them all tap real fast. <laughs> and when Watson competed, uh, he had to follow those rules, so he, there was a physical button. There was a physical like a robot button. A robot. Yep. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow. Hit the button. That's great. Yeah. But um, of course, that's still faster than the human response. Was that an advantage to Watson? Uh, no, because Watson still had to calculate percentage. Like uh, confidence, for, and that's why they sh they showed the percent of confidence of, r of responses. Um, I mean, the way they programmed it was to make it not only give it this wealth of information, but also have it lo like you know pick answers as, as a human. Yeah. Would. How pissed would you be if you had been trying to get on Jeopardy for like ten years <laughs> and you happened to draw the robot Jeopardy champion? <laughs> it it, it wasn't. They didn't compete against normal. It was Ken Jennings, and it was. Uh, oh, that's right. They brought in. Champions. They brought in previous champions. Okay, so they brought in sacrificial lambs. Did you see that rock paper scissors robot? Yes, it was awesome. Uh, you could play rock paper scissors oh, against the robot. You're talking about the website, like no, no, no. spoofing. No, no, no. It was yeah, a no, robot no. that will play rock yes. paper scissors. And it always wins. It yeah. always wins. It's amazing. The second it, it version. Does. So yeah. the confidence level for that is uh, it, when it has a camera, high speed camera to watch the human opponent. It's a Japanese robot, first of all. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Um, and it can predict uh, what the human's going to place. Uh, a, like I think. 30 milliseconds before the, they reached like the level field. And the first version, uh, it would wait till the human was like playing the action and then just play something real fast. Mm -hmm. But the second version actually anticipates before. And so the Based timing on, like, is like the perfect. movement in your hand? B based on the movement in the hand. So can't you just like Boop twitch it? your fingers and... You can never move that fast as, as you're going down. I bet there's somebody in the world that can move that 100 fast. 100%. Win rate. <laughs> Fucking robots. You can't even play. The, you can't even play one of the, the famous uh, the RPS gambits. 
But like, yeah, well, like my, my move is always to say I'm going to throw a stone and then you throw no, a stone every time. So, so, that so the, people out. the known RPS society gambits, and I think I, I might have talked about this before. We haven't talked about it on the podcast. Um, in professional uh, rock, paper, scissor play. What? Hold um, on. There's, Wait. There's, <laughs> so, there's, go back. In professional, in the RPS society, the, the rock, paper, scissors society, international community of <laughs> RPS. <laughs> they're they frown on it being called Rochambeau? <laughs> Maybe okay. uh, there's an, their annual competitions, um, national gatherings, and it's best two out of three. Okay, and the best players in the world um, practice and have their strategies. But because it's like a Roy uh, Lopez chess opening, <laughs> but you do have opening gambits because you're playing best two out of three, and the, you play three. I mean, three is the max you play to get to win two, right? Um, or unless there are ties, of course. But you think in terms of threes, and so the way professionals play is they come up with a set of three beforehand. Like they never change. So they don't think. You don't think. The only decision you're making is what combination of three that you're going to place. Because the moment you think is when you're psyched out. So like if I said I'm going to throw stone, stone, stone. So that's called the avalanche. Okay. And, <laughs> the and there's. This is. Are awesome. you fucking with us? No. Like, <laughs> there's the crescendo, which is the uh, the the uh, I think it's. The uh, the rock paper or rock scissors paper, so you like it goes bigger. Okay. And then there's a uh, paper dolls, which is scissor scissor paper. Um, wow. And then there's na- names for okay. names for all the. So the, you the intentionally lose the second one or the first one to, no, tra- you, you, to try you to up- choose the gambit, no. and then some yeah, gambits yeah. counter the other gambits. And right. uh, I... so is this like is this like <sighs> when you do professional RPS? Are you going super fast? Going is it super like fast. so? You do one two three. No, one, you just two, go. Three, you, one, just, two, three. you just go. There's no. There's no one two. You just play play play. Oh, one two three oh. is the play. Yeah, one blah, play blah. play play, and then someone. Wants. So like, is the is the savant of the rock paper scissors world the guy who can look at the second one and make the decision fast enough to counter? It, so he gets off of the gambit. It seems like the gambits are a cop out. Maybe you know who knows. Yeah, I, I'm you sure there's. I'm the sure there's a prisoner's dilemma thing going on here somewhere. Do they run high speed cameras so that the people don't like telegraph paper and there, then change it to are, scissors? There are referees who are trained to t- <laughs> to watch the time. Is this a Japan thing again? No, nope, this is a Canadian thing. Uh, I think really? the la- one of the last uh, championships was in Canada. There's a mini documentary about. I it want to go to a rock paper scissors championship. At that level of rock paper scissors, I, I bet it's all about eye contact. Yeah, can you even you can, want, you can tell what they're going to do? It's all psychology. Yes. Yeah. It is, like it any, is I mean, I remember psychology. I took a sports psychology class in college, and okay. uh, the, one of the things that came up was of the top 100 PGA players in the country at that time, that was, of course, quite a few years ago, mm-hmm. the difference in average scores over an entire season between the number one player and the number 100 was less than two points. But just because the the grouping is so tight at that level, right? But but because but the number one players were good because of the, because they were better psychologically, not because they were better technically. So they didn't choke, right? They didn't choke. They could psych the other players out. You know, whatever it took. Yeah. Well, Rose goes in front, big guy. Yeah. Um, how much can I license? How much does it cost to license? They Watson? did not say in the articles that I read. I my hunch is if you have to ask, it's probably too much. Um, World RPS is the website. WorldRPS.com. All uh, the bureaucrat is paper, paper, paper. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that, see, that seems like it should be a weak gambit because it's paper and paper is weak. Fist Whereas full of dollars. Whereas is strong. Fist full of dollars. <laughs> Fist paper, paper? Fist paper, paper. Wow. Um, Verizon is selling the Moto X, or sorry, Motorola is selling the Verizon version of the Moto X for 50 bucks through the Moto Maker store. So if you want to get your Moto X on and you're a Verizon user, you can totally do that. You can unlock one pretty cheap too, right? I think that they are very inexpensive. Like the reports say that that has not that Moto X has not burnt up the sales charts for Motorola. They think mm. uh, about five hundred thousand have been sold total, right. which is not that many. That is not that great. Uh, my my feeling on that, and I have f- friends who love Android who bought the Moto X. Uh, my feeling on that is that people uh, they want the best phone. They, people still love specs, especially I think in the the Android community. Speeds and feed specs, people or want qualitatively speeds, speeds and feed specs. And mm. uh, Moto X, even though it has unique features, uh, is not a high end top tier phone. In the same way that the Galaxy S4 and the HTC One are. Hmm. The Moto X is the one that has always on OK Google, right? Yeah. Yes, that's and the neat. one assembled in America, Texas. Oh, rock on. Um, 
Verizon is also having some problems in big cities. They reported that they're actually having bandwidth problems and are having to throttle LTE in San Francisco, New York, LA, and I think Chicago wow. uh, because of network congestion. So I assume that they'll be working on fixing that, but I don't know. Um, no, Norm, anything on either of the Verizon stories? Are you good? I'm good on the Verizon stories. Okay. I'm going to talk about the Smithsonian I'm on AT&T. now. You're at, okay. Um, how's AT&T these days? Great. Really? Yeah. What, they've, did, they've did I have, I have lost so I mean, many phone options. So... So in my in my area, right, yeah. AT&T, in my house, in, typically anywhere in my house, you would get three or four bars of 4G in the past. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly about two months ago, it was all LTE. It's like, wow, they must have improved something. Suddenly you get these blazing speeds. Well, f- Do you get oh, the text messages? 4G on AT&T is HSPA right. plus, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you get the uh, the text messages? We've just added a cell tower. Here. No. Yeah. Oh, I got one of those right before I, I switched off. Have. It was but great. Suddenly my speed tripled, essentially. Huh. And And dropping calls and stuff like that still good? I never really have very many problems with that. Okay. Um, do you actually make calls with these things? I do, <laughs> actually. The, our, our, since we got bought last year, our new corporate overloads we used the phone a lot more than our old corporate ah. overloads did. Um, you know what I've been doing more is FaceTime audio. It's great. I haven't done FaceTime audio Phenomenal. yet. Phenomenal. Who it, do you it, FaceTime it, audio with? It sounds, it sounds like this. I mean, really? it sounds great. I FaceTime audio with my parents back on the East Coast. Okay. And... and does that uses their data plan then? Yeah. Or Wi-Fi if they're in the yep. house, I assume. Yeah, but it works on data. So you can be out roaming. and So all you're doing do is it. going through Apple servers as opposed to the cellular servers, even though you are in terms of data, because regular phone calls are data anyway. Well, it just uses the higher, uh, better audio codec. That's the only yeah, difference. You're just using more bandwidth. Yeah. Regular audio? No, regular calls on don't use your data minutes. They don't no, use no. your data, but it's still, it's, megabytes. Still, it's still bits. Yeah, yeah. Like when you're yeah, going yeah, through Verizon or AT&T, it's, it's, yep. everything's it, bits. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's all bits now, and they're just... All the way down. It just uses less of your CPU and on the phone. But it's like, it, one of the best things is this is it's a full duplex. So, you know, with cell phones, oh, really? I feel like it's almost like a CB radio where I have to wait till they stop talking, you know, before Over. I can... <laughs> right, exactly, but it's great. Yeah. See, my parents always use speakerphone, so it's never a full duplex. <laughs> What? I couldn't hear you. The dog was barking. Were you talking? That's horrible. You just cut off. I can't hear you. Wait, what? Are you there? Um, the Smithsonian is has published online 3D scans of all of the artifacts, I think, so far that they have 3D scanned. No, just 21 of them. Oh, it's just 21 of them? So far. Oh, shit. I'm really disappointed. I went to look at the site, and it was down yesterday when I went to look at it. So, uh, um, What are the artifacts that they've posted? They have... Is Fonzie's jacket in there? Nope. <laughs> is the Bell X1 that Chuck Yeager broke the speed of sound in? No, but there's an airplane. Is, uh, the, one, the Wright Brothers airplane is on there. Okay. Is the Spirit of St. Louis on there? That's the, that's uh, that's uh, Charles Lindbergh's. Charles, nope. They have a scan of the Wright Brothers airplane? That seems yeah. like it'd be really hard to scan with all the struts and stuff. So they scan... What about the Woolly Mammoth from the, the Natural Woolly, History Museum? Woolly Mammoth is scanned. It's there. That one they scanned with 80 angles. I think either 60 or 80 angles using laser scanning. Um, there's a video on the Smithsonian wow. website showing how they actually do the wow. scanning. Uh, it's not just like photogrammetry. Mm-hmm. It's, they have robot arms that study and, and do laser scanning. Right. They also, for uh, biological things like flowers or artifacts that like mummified things, they do CT scans at Cornell. Huh. Um, and uh, the cool thing about this new website that they launched in, um, uh, to commence their, they had a 3D scanning conference at the Smithsonian because it's, it's a bigger deal now. Like museum 3D scanning is a thing. A lot museum of art museums scanning. have done scans of and, like and their sculptures. Independent people and, have done scan, yeah. scans and put them on Thingiverse, for example. Um, they uh, are also putting all the data sets online so you can download what I think is close to the, the original file. Oh, and, really? And you can, you can process it and 3D print it yourself. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so they're totally the embracing. The is coming. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. All, it's, it's not like public domain stuff, but they're making the stuff that... You know, should be In other words, public, you can make your own public. models, but you can't sell them. You okay. cannot sell them. Right. Yes. So, so if you want to print Lincoln's uh, face tribute. from his life mask or death mask, okay. you can do that. Um, what about the giant squid? I don't think the giant squid is on there. Uh, well, they'll eventually come, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah they, so. the, do you know how many items Smithsonian has in its Hundreds catalog? Hundreds of thousands. Millions. In, in its cat- total catalog? The, a billion items? No. Three billion. 137 million that is a lot things of stuff. in its collection. Objects. Can I sell collection. prints of NASA photos? Yes. I think I think yes. yes. They're public domain. But these 3D scans are not. The Smithsonian's not public domain. It's a private institution that's funded by the by the it's government. By as Mr. I understand it. Smith- Smithson. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but I think the Smithsonian takes federal a fair amount of federal money at this point. 
I could be wrong. Because they were all shut down. Like the zoo was closed during the federal shutdown. Right. Uh, if, if you don't have a 3D printer or you don't want to view the 3D models on your computer, you can also view them online. Um, there's a WebGL player that will let you, just, you know, s- you can spin, spin it the around model yeah. and, and zoom in. Uh, they also have created some cool wallpapers that you can download. For example, the Bully Mammoth has like a 75 meg TIFF file that you can download <laughs> to print out a giant wow. like 300 DPI poster. Okay, cool. Could so I make wallpaper it, for my wall? It, it's for like it's for educators. So if teachers want to put that stuff up on the on their in the classrooms, they can do that. You guys have you guys all been to the Natural History Mu- History Museum? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, long time ago. Maybe. I grew up half an hour from there. Right. The the when you hit the entry to that place and it has the big open rotunda that goes all the way up and the woolly mammoth is there. Like as an eight year old me was completely blown away, <laughs> and then I got lost in there for like ten years, pretty much. Like it was, it's a great museum. That's, That's the one where if you favorite. go outside, you're on the airfield with the uh, transformer, right? Uh, yeah, you're in New Mexico. If you come right. out the other door, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, MakerBot announced an initiative along with um, a company I'm not remembering right now to put a 3D printer in every school. This is part of the Obama thing that was part of every the, what school? Every school, private, so public, grade every, school. Every, I think putting a thing that runs at 220 degrees Celsius is a great idea for kindergartners. Yeah, isn't it, though? Hey, kids, <laughs> don't touch this. It can burn you and then crush your fingers. Um, I, the idea is, I think this is part of um, kickstarting the new American manufacturing. So right. I assume it's probably middle schools and high schools. If I, if By the I way, is there, is there an Etsy for 3D printing objects? Um, stuff you can buy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, Shapeways, is Shapeways that. does that. Okay. There's a bunch of, but those are kind of more rather than, like Shapeways lets people who build models sell stuff to people. Right. They don't really let people who 3D print stuff sell stuff to people. Okay. I think Etsy's kind of that because you can buy a bunch of 3D printed stuff on Etsy too. Oh, okay. Um, I thought that was interesting. I don't know if there's anything to talk about there. Uh, Norm, you saw this uh, Avagon virtual. How do you say that? Virtual retinal display. No, no. How do you say the company? I Avagon? think it's Avagon. It's an unfortunate name. Yeah, I did. The, the company, the company name is least interesting. Thing but the about URL it. was cheap, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, these these are a pair of uh, head-mounted display, head-mounted glasses, a lot like the Sony HMD, HMZ TZ one, TM one. Yeah, I just sold mine on eBay this morning. How much did you get for them? Four fifty. How much did you buy buy for? Maybe twice that. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> so why did you buy one? Is my question. Because it's great. It's great. I mean, in terms of getting a nice 3D image, there's no crosstalk. It's 720p in one eye and 720p in another. They get dedicated screens. Dual you, OLED screens. You can't right? do that any other way. The problem with it is the screen looks like it's about right here and it's 10 feet. Of, uh, so yeah, did big. you ever use it? The pro- in, did you ever find an environment where you use that instead of watching your TV? Yeah, well, you sit in bed. But the the problem <laughs> wow, I the, can't imagine. the problem for me was that I don't know if my eyes are in a different spot than other people's, but the corners of the screen were blurry as could be. So uh, if anything went out there, it was just like it got lost. I think it's, that's the the lens, the optics. Yeah. Right. yeah. So uh, no. so you plugged in like sitting in bed, putting on an HMD, and then plugged that into like HDMI into a DVD player or Blu-ray player. That's correct. <laughs> wow. Did you lay flat back? Yeah. So no, the, like, a, the weight wasn't on your I head? I watched entire 3D movies this way. Is there this, was, is there this was, Did odd? you fall asleep? Yes, I, I think this is odd. I actually had a dentist that did that, right? A long time ago. I would a, pay money for oh, that. Oh, so okay. A you would, dentist. Yeah. That makes yeah, right. more sense. He would put on your face. You'd, you know, completely tune out what he's doing. Right. The, 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 guy who, the, gas. the guy who bought it from me on eBay is getting spinal surgery next week. That's why he wants it. Wow. For recovery. That's a whole market that I didn't consider for these. Well, just to be clear. who just don't want to be aware of where they are so this is a better like for watching movies that sony thing is a way better way better device than the oculus right now right just sure. because for of watching the movies pixel for, the resolution. for 900 dollars, yeah. it's still better to buy a 42 inch tv <laughs> hang it on your ceiling yeah, no, 3D doubt, no doubt yeah. from from amazon how many movies did you watch with those goggles on maybe three or four so that's 150 <laughs> bucks a movie, basically. I mean, I don't know. Those are full 3D movies I watched all the way through. Hey. I also streamed a number of Netflix things. Okay. Into the okay. Let, who, let those of us who have never bought wasted tech. Oh, no, no. I, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> let me tell thing. you. <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd. I bought multiple pairs of 3D shutter glasses for my like ni- late 90s era video cards. I had a VFX one. Remember those? Ooh, wow. Also famous because um, wow. Brian Rizzo is now in video. Used to be their PR guy way back in the day. Really? Way, way back was that when he was? I at, don't remember b- that. When before he was at Boot. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is back when wow. they were in, it was a Canadian company. Remember? So. Shutter oh, yeah. glasses for Canadian, sixty hertz eh? monitors or less. 
Yeah, uh, you could get well. No, no, because that was back in CRT days. So you, I had a 120 hertz CRT. Didn't make any difference. It was still terrible. Right. Because the problem with that was that the images didn't align on the monitor, so there was all of these black yeah. edges <laughs> yeah. on terrible. your on your yeah. four by three screen. It was it was bad times. Um, so um, these glasses are not Oculus Rift competitors yet. There there is head tracking. And right. There's a nine axis accelerometer in there. But the cool thing is they shine the image right in your eyes. So, eye, so right? yeah, they paint it onto your retina, right? Yeah. So uh, oh, there's wow. a, it's, there's a frame. That's like Ready Player One. So yeah, uh, it, it's not like Oculus. Uh, it's not f- entire field of view. Okay. You see, it's just like the Sony's in that you see a frame, in, like a, a window, a border around an image. Um, no crosstalk because you can you can adjust the IPD, uh, interpupillary distance, um, and there's dioper lenses in there, so you can you don't have to wear glasses. So, so you can put on so, so which which those other HMDs like like this like the uh, the Zeiss HMD the Simizer also has that. So so can you. Like, what does it look like when you put them? Do you put them on? Yes. So what does it look like when you put them on? So uh, the technology is uh, DLP. As opposed to using a LCD Laser. panel, um, like the Oculus is one seven-inch panel. Okay. Split in half between two eyes. The yeah. Sony one are two small OLEDs or a 720p right. uh, shining eyes. And the theory behind this is that uh, human eyes do not like d- direct light, uh, emitted light. Okay. It's, it's why uh, when you look at a, a computer screen for a long time or your phone for a screen, it's why if you look at your phone at night before you go to bed, you'll ruin your sleep because it's emitted light. I think that's just, there, that's just a hypothesis. That, but okay. That's one, uh, one hypothesis. Yes. And the other hypothesis is you don't blink when you look at those screens. I don't, I don't know about You know that. Colin McRae never blinks when he drives his car. <laughs> um, did, I but guess But the dead, vast yeah. majority of light that we see in every day is reflected light from the sun, from other things, and that's what our eyes through evolution is most accustomed to. Um, and so reflected light, they, they, instead so of using they the So they think the mirror act of using the DLP, which is a bunch of little tiny mirrors. Yeah, so DL- the way DLP works is, and DLP is a text yeah. instrument technology, mm-hmm. is you have a chip, uh, it looks like just like a, a piece of, you know, piece of silicone, yeah. silicon, and Thousands inside, of millions yeah. of micro mirrors. One for each pixel. One for corresponding to each pixel, and they shine an RGB LED at that entire grid, and the mirrors kind of shift and then bounce the light and, yeah, right. and then split it off. So it's actually three mirrors instead of one million, it's three million because there's, it's RGB. And then they bounce the right uh, spectrum into your eyes. So they have different. They have three sets of mirrors for each color. They'd have to because there's no way you could put a color wheel in something that tiny. Well, yeah, but they could just change. They could strobe the the reds. They then turn them off and just do it really quickly. Because the way like in a DLP TV worked is that there was a, a color wheel, yes, there were sometimes right. two that spun in a single in a single chip DLP projector. Yeah, uh, this doesn't have the color wheel. I okay, believe. or or it does that somehow with the, uh, the well, RGB if it has LED. RGB LEDs, it can just change the color of the LEDs in time. Sure, with right. the mirrors. Uh, but the idea, because it uses the mirrors, uh, and it's just reflected light bouncing straight into your retinas. Mm-hmm. Like there is no f- screen grid of pixels. You're telling me there's a projector here that's shining right into my eyes. Yes, yes. very dim compared to looking at an LED. And, very, I, can, very and I can resolve this? It looks And it looks beautiful? like a screen. That's incredible. And w- but what you see in the screen, because it's, the mirrors are so close and it's just bouncing, is that you don't see individual pixels. They're blended together. Huh. And even though it's a million, which is about 720p or 7, uh, 1024, 768 in terms of pixel resolution. One yeah. per eye? Uh, per eye, one per eye, yeah. one chip per eye. Um, it looks much higher definition than 720p because you can't see, there is no uh, screen door effect at all. So what, so what, is the, what does this look like? So when it you looks put like them watching on, a movie. It looks like... But is it, is it blocking out what's behind it? Can you see through... Oh, like, no, it's, is black. It just, it's black. Oh, so yeah. you just see black. You, you see it's black in the image right in the middle. It looks just like what looking at a... You know, those, uh, okay. A, a, the, the Sony glasses. So, so they're not trans, They're not like those cast no. AR glasses no, no, you no, can no, see no, through. No, right. no. Uh, you're seeing... It, objectively, you're looking at almost exactly what the right. Sony HMDs well, are I mean, showing. Yeah, I mean, I got it. remember they were talking about lasers scanning under your retina a long time ago. This is sort of like a primitive version of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's like William Gibson stuff. That's right. not real thing. <laughs> and, um, b- but because there there is no screen that's going through, like it's not like a backlight through a grid of LEDs. It's just one or back, a, gr- a grid of LCD uh, pixels. It is just one LED through the mirrors. So they're projecting blobs of light on your it eyeball. Is, it is a h- very f- high, highly refined right. little blobs of light. 
Um, okay, and so the, and the, 20, the 720p stuff looked like 1080, at least 1080. So it looked crazy. It looked high resolution. It, it's like how if you look at a, if you go to a, a movie project, a digital theater. Yeah. Uh, and many times, which are just, almost all DLPs, they're all DLPs, but they're all projecting basically 1080. There's not a lot of 4K projectors, like especially the first gen ones. Okay, are all 2K projectors. It looks so much better than 1080 than you would on your normal TV right. because right. it's bouncing off a screen and because the the, 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 the pixels the, blend, the visual pixels are blending. Yeah, so you can see some. The only aliasing you see is in the source, not oh, in, okay. not right. in the output. Right. So you see the image artifacting from the low bit rate on the source, or if they, they're projecting 2K into 2K source, like a video file, you can see like in text the smoothing of the alias. Right. So what did you watch on the uh, They showed Life of Pi. Okay, and, awesome. Uh, so it's 3D, and yeah. 3D looked really, really good. Best 3D movie I've ever seen. Better than Avatar? A ton's better than Avatar. Okay. In terms um, of 3D. Better than Gravity? Oh, well, now that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. Because I thought Gravity was the best thing I'd seen in, in 3D. Yeah, I, don't know. I thought that's, Gravity that's was really good, one. but I haven't seen Life of Pi. Did you see? Uh, we'll talk about Gravity in just a second. But um, this will be at CES next year. They, they've been um, developing for a year. While, while we're on the topic of virtual reality, did you yeah. see this Inform demo? I sort of passed a link yeah. on the Twitter feed. Um, no, it was it's on the site today. Cool. It's, uh, so it's they use Connect PC, right? And what you do is you're on one side doing your thing with your hands, and the other side is this little machine that's got these all these little mechanical posts. And anytime you do, you're moving this virtual ball around, and it kind of moves these posts. And you do, in other words, you're manipulating real objects with the Kinect. It's a physical telepresence. Right. So okay. MIT Media Lab um, has a demo where it's a table, and the right. table, uh, like like Lloyd says, has mechanical posts. Has mechanical posts. It's low resolution. They look so like it actually those, looks those, cooler. Those pin things where you put your hand in. Yes. Exactly, right. Your hand exactly, exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. But even lower resolution than that because the individual posts are, I think, like one inch by one yeah, inch. Yeah. Um, but as you manipulate something, is the whole the surface side, of the table post? Whole, yes. whole surface rises up oh. and manipulates the so ball. So they had a ball on there. So you, you, you're moving this thing around. The ball's waving along. It's really so it's like cool. like a Call of Duty cutscene where it has the things <laughs> come up and says, "This is this is welcome to Bogota." Well, it's like a, if you've seen the, the Wolverine the movie, I like the that. bed that yeah. people sit on. We haven't seen. I can see like it's like in the future, like temperpudic beds will yeah. be like all right, you know. Anyway, raise it, it, you it's, up. it's pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting. And this is an MIT Media, Media Lab joint? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, Before we move on, can I yeah. go back? I want to know... Verizon? <laughs> what, yeah. MakerBot? Smithsonian? What, Which way do you want to go? We can go anywhere you want, guys. I just one question about the... Because I'm yeah. super into these glasses idea. What's keeping them from... <laughs> of course from you are, because you're the guy who buys this. I mean, Jeremy has his wallet out right now. Like, that is my big question. I will buy it. Um, what's keeping them from doing a wider field of view? Uh, nothing. It's code. Uh, they said it's like several lines of code and optics because with Oculus, it's optics also that, that stretch it out. But uh, they don't want to do wider field of view because, one, it's, it's technically 720 right now. And they want legacy media. So it's not for games. It's for watching Blu-ray. And Blu-rays don't make sense I understand when that. they're stretched out. But they could do it for VR. They could do it for VR probably in the second generation. And there's uh, head tracker. Like, unlike the Oculus, I I'm assuming with this technology, you could refine it such that there is full immersion, like 100%. You see, out of periphery and if everything. They have a, uh, depending on the DLP chip, like, I don't know how, it's, I think Texas Instrument has 1080 DLP chips. They have, four, uh, they have 4K DLP chips. Yes, they and do. they're just very It's expensive. just a matter of how yeah. much retina you can hit. Yeah, and, and also, yeah. The, their big innovation is getting those DLP chips to work at a distance that's like that. Yeah. Right, and, uh, the, a, and I would you know, guess that the, the scanning rate of the LEDs is a big deal, too. Well, the Pico projectors are almost all DLPs, aren't they? The right. little tiny ones? Mm -hmm. But they're not made um, to be, sh you know... How they're, they're made to re resolve at a, at a big distance. Is there a yeah. price yet? No price. They're talking to consumers. I think they're making most of the money from military contracts because this is originally a military thing. Uh -oh. And they're targeting consumers. Uh, they want to put the galvanic sensors in there. They want to do pupil sensors, like a retina, like um, pu eye pupil tracking iris the whole sensors, thing, yeah. eye tracking. Uh, they want it to be wireless Wow. for wireless video. Uh, the guy who, who came by... Were is, these big and bulky? They, they look big and bulky. We will all be Borg. Um, the guy who came by, like the people who founded it and, and were working on it, one guy was like he was the CTO of Citibank. Okay, so, so he's the money guy. No, he's not the money guy. Oh, he's really? a software guy. He's a software. Guy. Okay, yeah, and he he, he invented spreadsheets. <laughs> Great. He said, oh, "Yeah, I'm Mr. Like, Lotus. Who's, who's gonna buy this? I said, who's who's gonna buy this? Who do people really want to? No, it's the Hebrew Computer Club guys, right? Like, I said, who like." I didn't know about you, Jeremy, who lays in bed watching the movies with these glasses. <laughs> like, do people really want to do this? He goes, you know what? Do you have a TV in your bedroom, Jeremy? No. Do you have a TV, TV in your bedroom? Like? No, I, we have one TV in the house. Yeah. Uh, and he says, you know what? 
there are a lot of unproven technologies. When I was working uh, 20, 30 years ago at Lotus, and we were working on something that people didn't think would work, you know what that was? The spreadsheet. Oh, boy. <laughs> you think you think he's sitting around in the office, and somebody he comes up with an idea, and somebody's like, I don't know, that doesn't seem that practical. He's in... You know, when Back I was at Lotus, <laughs> we had some ideas. We weren't sure if they were going to work out every time. Okay. This daughter comes home from school, and she's like, I, hey, can I have some ice cream after dinner, before dinner? And she's like, you know, I don't think ice cream before dinner is a good idea. And he said, well, you know, and then the kid throws it back at him, comes around with, I don't know. I don't know where this is going. Um, <laughs> uh, Dropbox fixed their biz. If you, if you are a person that has a business Dropbox account for work and a personal Dropbox account for home, it is it is a bad experience right now, but they have fixed the problem apparently. Okay, um, so now like Gmail has the little drop down where you can choose which user you ha you're connected to at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. Now you just have if you update to the latest version of the Dropbox app, it may not be out quite yet, but I think it came out Tuesday. Okay, uh, you can switch back and forth between your business and Gmail and and personal Dropbox okay. accounts good to know. rather than having to merge them in a way that is not good Idiot. if you keep all of your you know photos and right. stuff in your personal Dropbox. Um, Nintendo, this is crazy. This guy's <laughs> Nintendo is getting better at internet. Um, but does it matter? I that's it, a larger no. question for another day. <laughs> um, they're unifying your 3DS and Wii U eShop accounts. So what that <laughs> means? Listen, wait, wait, wait. This is a big step because right now, if you buy a copy of the Legend of Zelda on your 3DS and Legend of Zelda is out for your Wii U, never the twain shall meet. Your Wii U has no idea that you even have a 3DS. So now you will be able to share currency between the Wii U eShop ah. and the 3DS eShop. So they're one-tenth of the way to what Sony's doing. They're almost <laughs> to where the Xbox One, the original Xbox, was okay. 10 years ago. Right. Optimistic me thought you were about to say I can play you co-op in the new Super Mario Brothers across the internet. I don't think that would work because of latency. I think oh, that would be a bad please. experience. Somebody can figure that out. If I can play... The speed of light is un inviolable, Jeremy. I can play FPS with you. With you. I can play a you Mario can, game. Maybe. I don't know. You just come over to the house. We can play Mario anytime you want. Bring the kids. That would require leaving the house. Well. <laughs> actually, I only do once a week to guest <laughs> occasionally to guest on this podcast. You should come down come, come down to Pacifica, Jeremy. We'll show you what it's like in the burbs. Um, they, don't, they haven't said if, the, if buying one game on one platform gets you the game on the other platform like it does with the Vita. But I would assume that this is a precursor to that happening. I would hope that this is right. a precursor to that happening. Um, HP's Chromebook 11 chargers are overheating, and there's a recall. HP just can't cut a break. If you have an HP Chromebook 11, the good news is that it uses a USB charger, so you can charge it with pretty much any 5-watt wall or 10-watt wall wart, like your iPhone, iPad, um, Android phone, Nexus 7, Kindle Fire, HDX. <laughs> Lloyd, what are your thoughts any on Chromebooks? Um I can see a point for some users, just not me. Would you rather have a Chromebook or a Surface? Which Surface? RT. No. Two. Two <laughs> RT, whatever. No, the neither. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an answer. I'll have my iPad. The only Thank you. <laughs> you can have one computing device. It is a Surface 2, the, R the ARM version, or an HP Chromebook 11 that will not catch on fire. <laughs> what about connectivity? You have Wi-Fi. I don't know. I would probably just give up computing entirely. <laughs> <laughs> um, there you have it. I, I got to say, the more absorbed I am in the, into the cloud, the happier I am. Because the, the, all your stuff being not on, and that's the, the idea hard of the drives? Chromebook is that I can lose the computer and have a you know get a new one, and it's like I never lost the first one. It's just all. Cloud oh, you based. mean lose the lose the computer, yeah, not yeah, yeah. Like get rid of it. I just I'm, I'm well, loving loving that aspect of technology. In, in theory, with RT R two especially, you can do that too. Yeah. Except you have to do a horrific thing called SkyDrive. Yeah, I don't. I'm so I haven't. I mean, in full disclosure, I haven't really used SkyDrive beyond what you kind of use by default without having to think about it on Windows 8. Mm -hmm. um, what is the knock against SkyDrive? Well, my problem with it is that they're very um, last century about things like file names. File names that work on the PC will not work in your SkyDrive folder. What, like file names with commas and stuff? With dashes and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. A dash? Yes, yeah, right. I don't know. They may have fixed that, but recent, not that long ago, it I said, you can't upload this. And I looked at it, it, and it says, and it only, the only difference between that and the legal version I could upload is it had a dash. It doesn't rename it for you. It just says you can't upload it. Right. What about underscores? Probably yeah. okay with underscores. Underscores are okay. Well, how does that happen? I, you know. We're going to get a lot of nasty comments because I'm sure they probably fixed this like they two weeks ago. They probably have fixed this, but, you know, it says, 
and, and I, I've had, I'm not going to go into this. My horrific experiences with things like SharePoint. We'll just stay away from that. Yeah, I mean, so the, the, so when you're competing with something like Dropbox or even Box.net, where basically you install a client and then it just copies a folder across the internet magically. Right. You know, that's the whole thing. I mean, SkyDrive itself, the technology and the way it works, if I didn't know of anything else, I would think, this is really awesome. Yeah, if it came out in 2002, everybody would be like, right. this is crazy. Yes. Well, they had this thing called Live Mesh that was better than SkyDrive. And no, never mind. Don't let me get started. Yeah, Microsoft. <laughs> um, the But yeah, I mean, if the competitor is Dropbox or Box or something else that just ha or makes a G magic folder Drive, that right. lives across mm -hmm. all of your computers. Mm -hmm. See, I actually don't like Google Drive for anything but, but Google Docs. Because the way it handles photos and everything else is kind of janky. Oh, okay. So it has problems similar to what SkyDrive has. With yeah, it has. it's, yeah, a, okay. it's the same problem as, as I see it. Like SkyDrive is great with the documents that it understands. Dropbox is so transparent. But yeah, Dropbox, I just put something in there and it's it's a bag of holding that works right. across all my computers. Mm -hmm. That is great and it's idiot proof. Everybody right. understands that. Right. Here's a folder that now lives on every computer you own. Right. Why would you not want that? Um, Yahoo is selling a lot of unused domain names, like 30 or 40 or 50. Sandwich.com. Oh, okay. yeah, Sandwich.com. How much can you buy Sandwich.com for? Some sort Half of a million somewhere. or something. Airtrafficcontrol.com or <laughs> airtrafficcontroller.com. The, the biggest one, though, is, yeah. do you know? No. AV.com. Oh, wow, really? No, Two letters. Start, bidding starts at 1.5 million. Wow. I believe. I yes, bet so, the Onion's going to get that. I bet the Onion does not have the amount of money it will sell for to spend. Spending money. Let me go ahead and tell you a secret about domain names. Spending money on domain names is usually not a good idea, and especially when you're talking really? about twenty. It's not like the old days where, like, in in two thousand before Google came out, and you had to actually remember the URLs of the places you went. Now, if I want to find out, hey, there's a technology site that also covers making stuff. So you type technology making Norm Chan, and it takes you to the right place. Like number, you just have to, number one way people get to Facebook is. Searching Facebook and Google. Right. I still think, in terms of investment, you're, you're not prices aren't going to go down. Like no, in terms no, no. Of prices aren't going to. No, no. It, yeah. yeah. Well, it's if not like San Francisco real estate. Domain names are bought now defensively, not necessarily yes. just one. Yes. You buy all the typos too, right? right. Thirty bucks a pop. Mm -hmm. um, AirTrafficControl.com was the one that I thought was the funniest of the list. Uh, PlayStation app is available for iOS and Android now. Has anybody installed that? Didn't know. Yeah, you can get it. Uh, it's a little hard to sign in. Which is un not unsurprising, given Sony's history <laughs> with apps and kind of things that are not not that good. Um, once you sign in, it lets you see friends list and stuff like that, see who's online. Um, I don't think you can buy anything. But apparently, you'll have connectivity with the PS4, so you can connect your tablet to your PS4 for some ungodly reason. Okay. Um, KitKat is available now for the Nexus 7 and 10. Oh, I will get that. Um, Netflix is getting new designs on many devices. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but I thought this was interesting. They they are looking at Netflix as a what do people want to watch, not presenting them with a bunch of options problems program. So they so they about a year ago went through and said, hey, we're gonna if we're gonna redesign Netflix, what will we do? What you know, what do people want? And what they want is somebody to tell them what to watch. Really, they're so also not no longer designing with HTML5. I find I their rec recommendations to be completely useless. The recommendations are rough. They used to be really good, and they've gotten bad over the years. The recommendations are more indicator of the, the limited selection. Well, the, relative to sheer amount of media out there. So the problem I have is I, I primarily watch Netflix on Apple TV, and the Apple TV client, which which was very good a while ago, has kind of it, it's been a little stagnant, and they only expose certain things. Like you can't you can't really drill down in any category with a browse. You have to search for what you have to know what you want to watch and search. Right. Well, I actually have the worst possible Netflix uh, client that we use on our HDTV. What, oh, you're building into the TV? It's no, it's built into the Panasonic Blu-ray player that we Ooh, have. Wow. And it's really terrible because really the only thing you can use it for is stuff you've you've added to your queue on the web. You can't. Oh, right. Add anything. It's new. it's the Gen One right. Roku. Yeah. Right. right exactly. Yeah. Um, so the but it works. so they're designing a new interface. It'll be common across most devices, although there are always going to be exceptions like the Apple TV and the Xbox, where the app, the Xbox has a Metro style design and Apple TV has its its menu. Same with Windows Eight. Same thing with Windows Eight. Yeah. Uh, you know what Netflix should do is that in its menu they should populate it with and they should try content deals to populate it with not only things that they've paid licenses for but other types of web media. Yeah, like you mean, for video. example, like Tested.com's video? Videos, yes. So m to make Netflix.com or Netflix the app on any device, whether it's portable or on your TV, just your media hub. Do you hear us, Netflix? We're, we're, we're open to this. 
that's let's make it let's make some deals. It would make Netflix more valuable yeah. for users, and it wouldn't cost them that, m- that much. Yeah, we're, we're no, you heard Even it from Norm. We're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I, th- I th- so when I was reading the article about this on The Verge, I kind of thought that they were going to say, "Hey, we're going to just start playing stuff." Like it was it was going in a direction that made me think, "Oh, there you're going to turn on Netflix and it's just going to start playing what it thinks you want to watch, and then you can choose to turn that off That's or on like a normal TV." Idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like there's a lot of inertia for people when they turn on a TV. If they if if it's on something that's moderately interesting, I think a lot of people will just keep watching that rather than play Menu Hero for two hours. What trying they should to find do to watch. is that they should sync up your friends list because you can do Netflix with Facebook, and it's yeah t- tied social. So everyone in your friends list they'll program co- computation like audio, uh, a, a, the same stream. Okay. So you turn on your Netflix at eight p.m. and everyone's watching the same randomly generated Food Network ch- show. <laughs> Perfect. It's big real TV. Yeah, and that's the shared experience. It's a, it's a network want channel from, from TV. No, it's Norm TV. No, it, it is. I want to watch what well, I want to watch. Yes, you want to watch what you want to watch. But when people flip on the TV for you know fifteen minutes to watch something, uh, I never flip d- on the TV for just fifteen minutes. Different use cases. <laughs> you know what I've always wanted is a way f- to tune into anybody's phone and hear what they're listening to on, on the <laughs> on the bus. Like oh, just, squirting. Just Are you spot. kidding? No, I'm serious. I want to spot anybody yeah. I want, see him with headphones on, and it's I want to directional like, that I, guy. Yeah. And I want to listen to his music. So you're going to profile people to see how cool they are with their music? Well, yeah. Is that the I plan? mean, it would be an opt-in thing. I mean, you, anybody who wanted to could broadcast their sound. You know, this is what RDO does, right? No, but okay. only with your real life friends. I, I live on RDO. Okay. But, but I'm saying that's an asynchronous thing. I want to be in sync. I want to hear what they're hearing on the beat. Why aren't we friends? Are you Spotify, an RDO guy? We're not. Spotify so. does that. We must be, uh, we must be friend. But it, the sync doesn't work well. The Spotify tie-in with Facebook does that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's so interesting. When you hear people s- playing a song, yeah. and you click it, yeah. it will jump into where they are. But over the internet, it's though. Not, it's I want to do it on the bus. Yeah, I want to walk past somebody on the sidewalk. I want to hear yeah. it for yeah. ten seconds. Maybe yeah. we are friends. Matt Bragg listens to a lot of Canadian music. <laughs> um, Cyanogen launched a one-click installer in the Google Play Store. I thought this was super interesting and is a great idea for Cyanogen. So you basically download an app from the Play Store, and then. Excuse me. You can install (laughs) Cyanogen. Then you sneeze. um, And then you can install Cyanogen on a supported device from inside an app. Related question. Did you guys already cover the bit about the next version of Chrome on Windows 8 being essentially Chrome OS? No. Yes. This is only... Did I miss this? Was this a couple weeks ago? Yeah. They they sort of talked about this. This is only going to be on the uh, Metro version of Chrome, right? So you run the full screen version of Chrome. And you get basically Chrome OS. But is the full screen version of Chrome X86 or is it ARM 2 now? No ARM. Still no yeah. ARM. Yeah. God. Uh, talking Windows 8, PCs, you know? X86. One, one good browser on that platform would make all the difference in the world. If you can't run any apps, at least it could be a good, have a good web browser. So IE11 is good. But what's the elevator pitch on what makes Chrome OS different than just plain Chrome? You run all. Um, basically, it, you, you've got the. You've got a, it's running like. It's like you're running your Chromebook, right? You got, you got this. I don't. I think it just Focus. means it's full screen and then right. it's hard to get out. Yeah. <laughs> Probably <laughs> you got access to all the apps. Right. All like there's no out. minimize button in the top right corner. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, but yeah, but uh, all your apps are on your normal Chrome right. Chrome install too. Um, I just lost my tab. Uh, let's see. So, so the Cyanogen thing. Norm, anything on Netflix on Apple TV or Xbox? Nope. KitKat on Nexus Seven or Ten. You want to roll back on anything? PlayStation app for iOS. No. Kit, hey. Kit Kat's a f- reasonably fast rollout and happy with it so far. So I'll, I'll talk about it when we get to when we get to Nexus Five. Um, Microsoft is killing stack ranking. Do you guys you guys know what stack ranking is, right? We know, but does everybody else listen? Well, to I was know? asking. It was a rhetorical <laughs> question, so that you, somebody would say, "Oh no, tell me," so uh, I can then explain it to I people. I honestly at home. do not know. Forced bell curve. It's a forced bell curve. Kind of. Yeah. So the in in the practical College. the practical upshot of stack ranking is that if you have, at Microsoft, when you have a team, when you manage a team, at the end of the year when you're doing performance reviews, somebody has to be bad and somebody has to be good. And and there have to be people in the middle. Everybody can't be good, even if the whole team is awesome. Ouch. So what that, ha- what that has done over the last 15 or 20 years at Microsoft is has encouraged the smart people to work with dumb people rather than other smart people. So that you, you have... Uh, distribution of talent levels across the thing because if you work with other smart people you're punished at the end of the year and you don't get the big bonus because somebody has to be bad because somebody has to be bad 
Um, and if you're, it sounds if, like it sounds like a joke, right? If it you're in like, that group and yeah. you don't see anybody that's bad, you're the you're bad. The, you're the part, bad. Of, part of the issue was, was was from what I understand is Microsoft's version of stack wrecking was sort of very pure, as opposed to other companies who use similar kinds of things, but they make allowances for people who are exceptional or whatever. Right, and well, and also Microsoft didn't tell people like the official policy at Microsoft was <laughs> that you never tell people that there's stack ranking. Right. Um, so Microsoft's doing away with it, they say now. At the same time, it seems like Yahoo is launching it. So it's going to be—it's a real exciting time for terrible HR policies. Um, and I think that's it for me on news. Unless you do, you want to talk about the Star Trek convention? Oh yeah, I want to talk about. Do you want to talk Trek about that while we're testing, or you want to talk that about talk about that in news? <laughs> there are we, we, options. We can skip to the next section segment. Anybody else have news they want to talk about? Are we good? Jeremy's playing pong over there. I'm not. It's a <laughs> clock. It's a pong clock. Okay, we also have a lot of what we're testing. Uh, Norm, you met Chris Hadfield this weekend. I met him on Friday. You met somebody who has been to outer space and lived there for three months. Yes. Not the first time I met someone who has been to outer space. Who else did you meet from uh, outer space? There's the astronaut. Uh, Apollo 9, Rusty, uh, Schwarzkopf, I want to say. Um, please Google that so I'm not mispronouncing an astronaut's name. Yeah. Um, Good job, Norm. Yeah, he was on the USS Hornet uh, three weeks ago. Uh, you met two astronauts met this two month? Two astronauts this month. That's bananas. And uh, he was there to... Pro- the, the, that guy was interesting. Oh, uh, Rusty Schweikart. Schweikart, yeah. Difficult name to pronounce. He was the pilot. He didn't actually go on... Oh, no, he was the LEM pilot. He, he would have gone to the moon, but not so much. Uh, it, it was Precursor to 11. Yeah. Um, and he, he runs an organization to protect Earth from... Uh, meteorites. His NASA, hold on, his astronaut picture, you got to look him up on Wikipedia because his astronaut picture, Rusty Swikart, makes him look like he's about 15 because the astro, the spacesuit is enormous for him. Look, I can't turn um, it around. But, but yeah, he, his whole thing is he's raising money. Oh, wow. Uh, he's raising money to send a satellite uh, around the same orbit that Venus is at to look out into the um, into the the solar system. Oh, to get another perspective. And to find, to identify um, the meteorites that might destroy city, city killers. NASA is charged with finding the planet killers, which it has identified over 90% of, but has found less than 5% how? of the, the city killer size how? meteorites, like the one that hit Russia. How do they know um, that they've found 90%? It's a, uh, there's a lot it, of empty space out there. Yes, but because it's all in one plane. So they just look on one plane? Because the way gravity works, most yeah. of the stuff, fall, like our solar system is actually on one plane. It's on the orbit um, that the, 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 the equator there's a name of the for sun, that. right? Um, the ecliptic. The ecliptic, ecliptic yeah. yes. And uh, they look for that, and then they also do mathematical projections. Uh, and then you talk about different ways that if we did find those asteroids, how we would deflect them. It's, dude, tractors. it's real simple. You call Bruce Willis <laughs> and Ben Affleck. No, that's that actually doesn't the work. Russians idea. And then you put a space shuttle on with some extra boosters and you get some oil drillers and they go to there and they blow it up and then somebody has to push the button because they didn't have a remote control. R- that's, that's, that's actually And Russia's, then, they, then you eat animal crackers. The way you actually deflect an asteroid is you, if you can anticipate it 20, 30 years in advance because it's very predictable. Yeah. The, the flight path. You shine a laser beam on. Uh, you send you send you send ships up there, and then you use the gravity of the gravity wells of your vessels, and to slowly pull the asteroid. The gravity tug. Uh, away, away uh, off course, so it misses Earth. You don't want to increase. Man, you better get your math right on that, because mm-hmm. like it seems like if you whiff, that could go from being a city killer to a. Well, he, he needs about four hundred million dollars to do this. So he's, he's look, 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 if, it, if it is far enough ahead, and they know for sure they can shine a laser on it. The laser has enough. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Yeah. The funniest thing was when he was talking about it. There were some digs at Russia. Some, some, some. some really? Some funny, was, like just like, like choking, choking digs at Russia. Anti-communist or anti-Russia? No, just like oh, we don't know why these asteroids. They, they always seem to hit Russia. <laughs> or like blow <laughs> well, it up. That's that's Russia's idea. We don't want to well, do that. Russia has more landmass than any other country yes. in the world. Right. So. He's more also than that, China. I he's think. also a real cold warrior. Yeah. Well, he is. Yeah. And he, he was. He was on the front lines. Beat those reds. Um. It was just ironic because his name's Rusty and he really looks like a Rusty. Uh, Hadfield. Hadfield. Uh, Chris Hadfield. Greatest astronaut. mustache on earth. He, he is a, a, the patron saint of uh, Move member? Movember. Um, he was in, uh, at NASA Ames last Friday uh, promoting okay. his book also for the Bay Area Science Festival. Uh, Adam interviewed him and they talked about Gravity, the movie. Oh. They talked about um, 
overcoming fears in space about why we need a space program. And it was a great talk. And that guy has a firm handshake. Really? <laughs> Describe it. Does he grip grip he, grip deep? Does he, he, he grip he, like it's thumb crotch? It, it, it's the it's thumb not crotch? like your hand like hurts afterward, but you feel the effects of the handshake. Did, he didn't do like the squinch for, across the for, the for bridge days after. Okay. Um, <laughs> It, it was, you, it was have you watched that hand handshake. since then? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I found this book yesterday. I was at a library, but uh, when John Glenn went to s space and came back, he was the first American to, to orbit to the orbit, Earth. To orbit, yeah. Um, he came back to, I think, 100,000 tons of mail or something. People sent him a lot of letters, I or maybe, would Or maybe it was 150,000 actual letters, handwritten letters. And he released a book uh, publishing some of the letters uh, from kids, from, from religious nuts, from uh, people who have wanted to share their theories, people who wanted to sell things. It's hilarious. It's called P.S. I Listen to Your Heartbeat? Yes. Letters to John Glenn? Yeah. It's out yep. of print. It's really expensive. Oh, wait, no, it's $4. Um, what uh, did you ask Hatfield any questions? I didn't get a chance to. So uh, there was a possibly an opportunity in the green room before he did talk to get get him some questions from tested readers, mm -hmm. uh, but he was like surrounded by NASA Ames people. How yeah. many uh, letters did? But like, why why did why did the John Glenn letters? Did Hadfield get letters too? People don't write letters these days. It was a different era. I guess they send emails now. It was a different time, you different, see. Different time. There did, was a. Did you see the video that he released yesterday? The movement yeah. member video. It was really funny. You can, you can you can quantify the the heroism of of, uh, of someone by how much paper waste is thrown on the streets after their parade, and uh, <laughs> really like said when Lindbergh came across the Atlantic, they they weighed like several you know it was like a million tons of waste in, in the parades, like confetti and everything. Right. Well, and, that was the uh, teens though too. They were crazy back then. And John Glenn had more more waste. Wow. How much More litter hero. does your parade make, hero? Yeah. Um, you should watch the Hadfield Move member video. It's really funny. I will. And then on, over the say. weekend, I went to a Star Trek convention. How was? <laughs> did you? That did, was. Hold awesome. on. Did you wear your shirt? I wore. It was a perfect. I own. I half the reason I went was an excuse to wear to wear the the Star Trek outfit. Have where, you watched where? that since Dragon Con? Where was the? <laughs> where was the? Oh, where was, it was in Berlin game. It was an official San Francisco one. Um, wow. I've watched one layer of it. I washed the uh, wash the the in shirt, uh, the, in shirt okay. but not the outside shirt. Um, okay, uh, did you Star hear Trek people? Convention. Hold on, I'm gonna ask some questions. Okay, wait, wait, I wanna... for, uh, let me establish some context. Okay, uh, the first time I went to a Star Trek convention was when I was 12, and that was when at the height of Star Trek's popularity, of, like close, TNG DS9, right at the end of TNG, beginning of DS9 era, like mid 90s, I guess after it's after, TNG, after TNG finished episode, uh, the fifth movie. That's probably after the, the fifth movie. movie. Six, around the time of the sixth movie. Okay. Um, but that was in downtown San Francisco at the Masonic Lodge, huge auditorium, huge convention space, uh, massive. Uh, this was in the uh, Hyatt Regency Ballroom. Is this where the is this the same one that they have Bricks by the Bay in? No, this is a Berlin game, not oh, in San Jose. Oh, okay. But uh, uh, about that same size. Room. Okay. For, for the auditorium. Seems a little sad. Um, was the weird, maybe was, about 600 people. How was the carpet? Weird? Uh, <laughs> hotel carpet. Okay. And Percentage uh, of cosplay? 50%. Wow. So only this is only for, for the deep cuts. And, and of all eras and and Yeah, I was going to say, what, realities. Like, how many Chris Pines did you see? <laughs> Not many Chris Pines. <laughs> how, many, how many Zachary Quintos? Not many. Nope. How uh, many? Mo most... Vast majority, TOS and TNG, and it's the same people that have been coming for forty years now, twenty years maybe. Um, saw some Chakotes, so saw okay. some. Uh, you see any the Janeways? Gorn. There was a Janeway. It's a Janeway. Uh, uh, what about what about uh, Ferengi? Were no either Ferengi. Of the Ferengi children there? No, there's some obscure stuff. There's there are, uh, some stuff from the original series I didn't I didn't okay. recognize. Were there actual cast members attending? Oh yes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna ask. Okay. Um, was start with the biggest one, biggest name. Was Nichelle Nichols there? No, it's not the biggest name. Was Shatner there? Shatner was there. Shatner was there. Shatner was. Wow. There. Did you see Shatner? I saw Shatner. Did you shake Shatner's hand? Nope. The huge line, biggest line for Shatner. How much does a Shatner autograph cost? Of a six hundred person convention, at my estimates, maybe a thousand. The ballroom didn't look that big. Uh, two hundred person line for Shatner, a fifth of the people. Okay, Patrick Stewart wasn't there because I saw him on Twitter Stewart this weekend in England. There. 
um, um, Sirtis, Ry- Riker, Riker, R- Riker, Troy, and Beverly Crusher were there. Worf, Worf, not there. No Michael Dorn. No Michael Dorn. Uh, Sulu, no Sulu. You know Michael Dorn is supposedly getting his own show. Really? really? Yes. Worf the show. The, yes. life, the life of Worf. <sighs> yeah. Is this like let's, let's you're, TLC? You're killing me. You heard it here first. You're kidding. No, no, it's it's still in early development, so it may not. But fly, but oh, Worf, yes, they're working on one. Once I found out that Worf was on DS9 toward the why, end, why I, I kind of want to go Worf back and watch it. Because he's fucking Worf. And not, jo- or not a LeVar Burton a show. Because he's like, fucking Worf. But, but <laughs> he's a Klingon. Rainbow. He wears human clothes. I give Michael Dorn a web show. <laughs> oh, Michael Dorn's great. Um, uh, was, so, no Michael Dorn. What about, uh, um, was Data there? Nope, Brett Spiner was not there. Oh, they, they didn't have that many Jordy? people. Um, um, anybody else from the original series? Was the Gorn there? <laughs> no, but the guy who won the costume contest was a Gorn. Okay. And then 10 minutes later, walked back onto the, the convention floor, which uh, the hotel lobby, uh, as a sweaty Shatner because he was sweating under the Gorn costume, holding the Gorn head. <laughs> That's great. I have a photo of that. Did he, did he, um, did he go back outside and fashion a, a handgun from, the, uh, from some bamboo, uh, <laughs> saltpeter, and sulfur? That would be good too. Uh, Jerry Ryan was there. Okay, uh, oh, wow. fan favorite. She was she was a, a, a big attraction. Was there anybody day. from Enterprise? Was Scott Scott Bakula there? No. What? Is that Scott Bakula? Awesome. Did you get any autographs? I didn't get autographs. They were kind of, pretty they were good. Forty Gordon bucks from Marina Sirtis autograph. Wow, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, but this guy looks just like I'm Scott. Feeling a little oh. ripped off. Boy, that guy does look just like Scotty. Even though James Doohan had passed away. Uh, but the coolest thing, uh, there are two cool things there. There's a booth for um, XPRIZE. Um, okay. Qualcomm is sponsoring this XPRIZE. The way XPRIZE organization works is it, it, uh, they, they want to find moonshots, right? So you had the Ansari XPRIZE for, um, for the first uh, private space company to reach, uh, to reach right. low Earth orbit. Mm-hmm. And um, I think SpaceX won that one. And uh, Armadillo Aerospace, John Carmack's company, was in uh-huh. the running. They wanted to compete. But the idea behind that is it's called the Ansari X Prize. And I, I might be wrong about the organizations because that's the f- funding partner. Uh, they, they sponsor It's it. almost like an underwriter, right? So they, yes. it's like an insurance policy. So uh, Qualcomm is sponsoring a, the, one of the current X Prize competitions. Um, and it's to do a tricorder, a medical tricorder. And the, it makes total sense. A little sad, Qualcomm, if you remember, was the CEO of Qualcomm was the guy who gave the keynote at CES last year, the right. infamously mm-hmm. terrible it keynote. It was a really bad keynote. Really, really bad keynote. Uh, the one that was you know, edited on YouTube and everyone had gifts of it. Um, but also Luckily, for that- Luckily, Samsung did that thing later this year and everybody's forgotten about yeah, the Qualcomm for, thing. for the GS4. <laughs> yeah. uh, but at the Qualcomm keynote, they had a Star Trek ask- actress there, Alex C- Ellis, uh, Eve from Star Trek Inner Darkness was there, and okay. I didn't get why she was there. And it turns out that the Qualcomm, the CEO of Qualcomm is a huge Star Trek fan. Huge, huge Star Trek fan. Okay. And it makes sense for them to sponsor a, the XPRIZE for a tricorder because it's all about quantitative life. Right. You know? mm-hmm. Embedded devices, and Qualcomm makes the chips that go, would go into such a device. Totally makes sense. They've, they've, com- teams are competing now, and the idea is they want a medical device to scan for, cool. you know, for, for stuff. Uh, but they had a booth there. Um, and then also there was a booth for the local 1701st, which is the Star Trek fan club, the local okay. chapter. And they had uh, Artemis set up. <laughs> oh, awesome. right. Did you and play? I played Artemis. Do you oh, know what, we, what Artemis you think? is? It was awesome. Hold on. Explain what Artemis is. Artemis is a Starship bridge simulator. And it runs on iPad and PC. Um, and you can have you know basically up to six people playing it. One guy playing the captain and the other state and the various other stations. Science Hold station on, it works on calls. iPad now. Yes, there's an there's iPad no version that's not synced up yet. There's no par- a ver- a parody version. Oh, iPad so is you 1. can't play 7. iPad. It will get updated soon. The PC version is 2.0 right now. Right. Okay. Uh, but it's played over LAN, not internet. And like Lloyd said, you play with six people, but you only have five interactive screens. Right. The captain does nothing. The, cap- the cap- we have, we captain. We have four does people nothing. right here. The no, captain no, no. gives commands. No, no, no. The captain does nothing in the sense of there's, he can't interact with the screen other than views. The viewfinder. Right. So you were wearing a gold shirt. Did you get to be the captain? No, no I played weapons. Okay. Uh, we it, we had a, a holographic captain because he had the hollow meat emitter on his cosplay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but he barked out orders, and it takes a little while to, to realize as I'm playing the game that you need to respond. When the captain says, load a torpedo, you load it, and it takes time to load, but you got to let the captain know when the torpedo is loaded. Right. 
otherwise, and you can't just go fire on your own. You got to wait for the orders. Really, the you have to wait for the order? Well, oh, no, no, that's, no. that's the it, way you play. That's, that's the way the you play. should play. But in fact, in most Artemis things, when you, especially when you're first doing it, it's hilarity ensues because nobody's doing what the captain's saying, and they're all doing their own thing, and pretty soon you all die. Yeah, so you have <laughs> to. So, like, you the actually cooperation have to is the only way to survive. Right. And I was watching the guy playing engineering, and it's it's cool, like the distribution of power, like nodes right, and yep. sending repair mm -hmm. units, and it's the, really nicely done. The captain changes the, the the view, like you know, you aft view, you know, view of the enemy ship. We should play Artemis. Um, it's, still like, it's still like fifty bucks for a six player license, right? It is. Yeah. Oh my uh, god! You can buy it on Steam. Done. It's on, it's on Steam. I bought Works. it ages ago. Uh, and also, uh, the versions are synced up now. Uh, it's so cool when you get hit by the ship when, you, when your ship gets hit. Right. All the screens shake. Like all the, the, <laughs> yeah, the right. UI gets there's yeah. judder on the UI. Nice. Um, and, and it's it, not it's not mul it's not uh, like a person versus person. It's just a group. Oh, it's, versus no, no, AI. it's, yeah. it's yeah. player versus AI. AI. Scenario and, based. And it's not there's no Star Trek license with it, so there, everything's generically named. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're loading like you know nukes instead yeah. of quantum torpedoes. I had a friend tell me about this, but I didn't know it was Star Trek. Hey, uh, so Jeremy, when we play Artemis, will you come over and play Artemis with us? I will leave the house for Artemis. Hey, Lloyd, will you come over and play Artemis Absolutely. with us? We have six with, with yeah. Gary. That's that's yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's cool. five. five. Yeah, we can find six easy. We can find a six. Um, this sounds like an absolute blast. Yes, it is. It's Do fun. a Friday live stream. It, it would be perfect to live, but you have to find the right. Like the right I don't know if Gary has the right, has the right no, 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 attitude it, for it. it. You have the right, the right He'd have setup. to be captain because he's not going to follow instructions. Like this configuration yeah. would work. We just move the tables around. No, you can have four seats here and then captain stands yeah. in the back and you have the TV there for the view screen. I think what we right. do is do it in front of the green screen and we have a TV in the front for the view screen and we project the view screen on in front of where we're all sitting. But it's it's like it's <laughs> it's detailed just even playing weapons like yeah. I have the option for auto fire I can manually fire a target you know weapon systems on the enemy sure. ship and the other there's thing a you whole have, range the system. other part of the game is that you don't have infinite ammo right I mean you have infinite lasers but if you need to get nukes you have to dock with a space station and load up the nukes mm. so you have to actually dock and not hit crash. do you just like somebody no, get a joystick pretty automatic docking okay. no you don't need it it's all mouse driven okay cuz you're doing the you're giving directions to the ship you're not flying the ship with a joystick oh. Oh, okay, okay. Is there a that chump? was only an in insurrection yeah. anyway. Is right. there a chump role that nobody wants? Um, <laughs> probably the captain, <laughs> actually. The I captain can't has the least power because you, you have to play the captain really right and you have to be in the right group of people because otherwise they will ignore you. Do you have, yeah, like, can you, can Just you, like can the you, real can captain <laughs> has to inspire. <laughs> can you bring, like, a phaser set to stun so you can take out anybody who doesn't follow your orders and then take over their station? Yeah, you take a, yeah, cattle problem. Or problem. play it like a Klingon yeah. ship where you exactly. challenge for, for, for rule. Challenge for supremacy? Um, well, it sounds like you had an interesting weekend, Norm. It was, it was pretty cool. We baby-proofed the house this weekend, um, which is a nightmare. I didn't want to think about Just that. Just real briefly on the subject of Star Trek, uh, my six-year-old son was browsing Netflix, and he saw S Star Trek. What was the name of the uh, encounter, encounter at Far Point? Yeah, the, the Far pilot Point was the pilot for Next pilot Generation. Pilot for Next Generation. He saw that, and he, he hit play. He said, Dad, look at Star Trek. He knew this because I used to own the Star Trek pinball machine. Mm. Ah. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> Dad, look. So let me show you something. There's yeah. a bald guy in a red you shirt. You know that pinball machine you have? Yeah. They made a TV exactly, show out of that. Exactly. So, <laughs> and, and I was actually Picard for, for um, Halloween. So he recognized the, the costume. Oh. But anyway, he started watching it, and I was just like, oh, my God, my son is watching his first Star Trek episode. And, That's going to uh, be great. And my wife said, weren't you going to go get some Thai food? I was like, he just started a Star Trek episode. I got to stay. So we watched the whole thing. It was fun. Well, uh, Did he enjoy it? Yeah, he liked it a lot. I was surprised, and I I didn't realize what a good episode that was. It's my my younger daughter, who through no no provocation of mine at all, when she went off to uh, college, on Netflix watched the entire original series basically in in one term. Wow, it's worth it now <laughs> because it's uh, it's high def. Yeah, Not, uh, well on Netflix it's high def, but it's not the remaster. I don't even so. think it's high def on Netflix, is it? I, don't, I, I think TOS is high def, but I don't think the next. Oh, the, I, I the, meant next gen. The next generation isn't the the, the super. They're only on ones. season five. Yeah. yeah, and it's only the Blu-rays anyway. Yeah. Um, Lloyd, you've made some significant changes in your life. Well, in my photographic life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I uh, so I've been looking for a way to lighten my camera load, and yet not give up too much. Okay. So uh, and I played around with various mirrorless lenses. I never You've traditionally been a Nikon guy, right? right. Traditionally the DSLR. Yep, that's right. And I I never liked a lot of the the, the D DX size sensors on mirrorless cameras because you end up still with these big lenses. It's really the lenses that have the most weight, right? Right. So um, 
so Olympus came out with this thing called the OMD EM1, which is uh, the sort of the higher end version of the EM5, which is an SLR like mirrorless camera. Looks okay. Like, I mean, it looks like like an SLR. It's got looks a like a small on. SLR, yeah. Right, and it's got a lot of pro features built into it. It kind of looks like my dad's old uh, film DSLR. That right. was an Olympus. Yeah, and it's about half the size of my uh, D600. What I size sensor is it? Micro, Micro four, four thirds. thirds. Ew! I look at that so tiny. <laughs> so Norm uh, burned. But the, there's some cool things that they built into this one that sort of attracted my attention. First of all, they added phase detection sensors into the in, phase detection sites into the sensor itself. Yep. That's important not because of the micro four thirds lenses, but because you have, now have access to all the old four thirds uh, Zwicko lenses that uh, with an adapter and still get fast autofocus. You know, in the EM5, oh. when you would add an adapter in the old lenses, you, the autofocus would be very slow. Okay. But now they're, they're perfectly acceptable. And some of those lenses that they have on the, on the four-thirds, they're bringing some of that quality down to the micro four-thirds, too. They've got a new lens, the 12 to 40 f2.8, which is just a sweet little lens all by itself. So okay. it's, it's equivalent so to 24 to 80 so on when you, full frame. This is just like on the NEX, where when you say the okay. lens, it's a, you assume that it's a... Um, because it's a smaller sensor, two there's X a crop. crop okay, two X crop. Yeah. Okay, between four thirds and and full and, frame. Yes. So you you've ditched all of your Nikon stuff. At I'm this in point. the process of selling my Nikon lenses. I'm keeping the D600 body and the and the 60 millimeter macro because I need something to take pictures of, sort of pictures of the, pictures <laughs> of the camera with. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, other than my cell phone, uh, and besides, you know, the resale value on the on the on the pro lenses I have are, are very very high, whereas yeah. the body is like you know. Not that it's great. just another body. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, is this something you're going to regret in two years, or no? Probably not, because it's just going to get better. Okay. Now, the only the only real threat is will Olympus stay in the camera business, and will will Panasonic be in business because they're both suffering financially. Yeah. Olympus as a whole company is doing well, but the camera division's not so well, and then Panasonic's just suffering all around. And they're, yeah. they're the two main. They're, they're the, the two micro companies. four thirds companies. Right, yeah. Right. But there's some great lenses out there for it. The other thing, you know, I'm not just looking at cameras too i mean this is great this is by the way is a 14 to 140 lens okay so it's equivalent to well wow, that's a, a lens zoom. like the eight, the 28 to 300 on on nikon right yeah and it weighs one third of as much huh similarly i'm getting a uh the, the zwicko lens i'm getting is a 50 to two, 50 to 200 which is equivalent to 100 400 so what's your normal carry on this like what, what's your normal day-to-day -day that can be versus the, the, you're using that zoom no i'm probably when, i'm waiting for i'm I have the tw 12 to 40 on order, and that's okay. probably going to be my normal. And that's the equivalent of a 40 to 80. 24 yeah, 40 to 80. 80. Okay. 24 Basically, 80. 24 to 70, that's yeah. The yeah. wide on that. Right, right. And the thing of it is, is because of the way the, the, the physics works, the camera body is roughly half the weight, but the lenses are often like one quarter to one third the weight. Hmm, interesting. Um, so what, what yeah, are the pictures perfect, like? Right, right. So one of the things you don't get when you shrink the sensor size is you don't have as much control over depth of field, particularly if you want really shallow depth of field. Right. So you got to really watch that. But if you don't, if you're not doing uh, really close-up macro stuff where that's important, it's not as big a deal. If you're shooting landscapes, it's definitely not a big deal. Okay. And and you, it looks like you brought some huge yeah. printed pictures. Yeah. Of and the, and the one of the things I was concerned about, by the way, is is would the image quality be good? And it certainly is. I mean, I compared that to uh, like a 12 megapixel shot, and it turns out that with uh, the 13 by 19 inch printers, which is about the biggest printer I ever print on, um, you can get perfectly fine prints with um, 16 megapixels. I mean, I've gotten great prints out of 12. So. Excuse me. Um, there's some vignetting on that one, or is that intentional? That's the crappy lens, consumer oh, lens okay. I have on it now. This 14 to 140. It's a perfectly decent consumer lens, but it's not a high-quality okay. pro lens by any means. And the nice thing about the micro four-thirds versus the NEX stuff that I have is that the lens options are... There's so many more lenses for the micro four-thirds. They're kind of making sense of it. It's kind of uh, you know, mind-boggling because they, they don't always... Um, they're not logically designed the, the, um, the, in, in, the, in terms of the entire product line. So you look at it, it's like there's like gaps, but there's a, but there's a lot of overlap in certain certain areas. There's some lenses that are ha are can stand up to any of the best Nikon and Canon lenses, like the uh, 75 millimeter. How much is the body? Body's 13.99. Wow. Pretty much what the price is. Yeah, yeah it's not it's, and it's not meant to be a uh, yeah. It's a, like a prosumer SLR. In terms of, and it has a tremendous amount of control. There's some other neat things about it, like the way the, the fact that uh, this has an electronic view viewfinder, right? Uh huh. It's 2.6 megapixels. Oh wow! So in normal light, you don't, you can't really tell the difference between that and an optical viewfinder. In dim light, you get some refresh rate problems. You start to see a little flicker. Okay. But so. there, is there? I find that there's still a little bit of latency. I have not noticed much latency. 
At least in daylight. Having the high resolution optical viewfinder is nice compared to the big yeah. panel in the back. One thing Infinite that I want to yeah, one thing I want to try with a better lens on this is uh, how continuous autofocus tracking works. That's the one area where all mirrorless cameras have suffered Suck. a little bit. Yeah. So. Um, it looks like there's a lot of physical controls on that too. Is yep. it separate knobs for aperture and, and exposure and stuff yeah, like they're, that? They're, uh, and, yes, and, yes. Uh, and plus the screen has a touchscreen control surface if you want to use that. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of manual granularity control. I've Neat thing is that the, the contrast focus has 80 focus points that you can pick. Okay. Manually, and the uh, phase detection autofocus is I think 39. That's a lot. So. What does phase detection get you? So what phase detection gets you is the ability to use SLR lenses that are not mounted as close to the sensor. Uh, that's what all digital SLRs use, called phase detection. And actually, actually, not built into the sensor. It's built into the camera body, typically. How, how does it work? Um, you know, I don't know. I can't give you a straight okay. answer, except that in the case of SLRs, the, if you use live view, like on any SLR, DSLR, you're using contrast detection. You notice that autofocus is much slower. Okay. Uh, and that's just looking at edge right. to, edges it's, within it's, a box. Right. And Whereas you, when you're using the optical viewfinder, autofocus can be much, much faster with the right lens. Okay. So. Um, norm, how does this make you feel? Also, uh, depending on vertical and, and horizontal, uh, right? So you want cross type, right? So, Norm, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I like hearing the big camera. I, 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 <laughs> See, I, I, the, I, 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 I love. Uh, I love the big, the low light. Right. I mean, I can shoot it ISO 800 and it looks cool. You should see some of the 3200 shots out of this guy. It's ISO 3200. Awesome. Mm -hmm. oh. Noisy, I, I, like no. from a noise perspective. Yeah, not yeah. really noisy. What's the cheapest Canon full frame body I can buy? 60 is what I have. How much is it? Uh, if you find it during the holidays uh, with some rebates, you can get it for, I think it's 1800 No. Yeah. I paid 2000 I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my, my whole effort at lightening my load it doesn't just revolve around the camera. I mean, that was a, certainly a critically important thing, and I want to make sure I had the right kind of glass. Mm -hmm. But things like, I have this big Gitzo tripod, right? Great carbon fiber tripod. Not, uh, it, it's relatively light for what it is, but it's huge. I mean, it's like, I mean, when it's folded up, it's like two and a half feet long, right? So I got this thing, which is uh, by, by a company called MiPhoto, mm -hmm. uh, 3.1 pounds. Wow. Still will, and since I'm using a lighter camera body, it supports up to, I think, 18 to 20 pounds of the gear, which is more than yeah. I'll ever need. And the center post, well, you can move the center post in one leg and it becomes a monopod. Oh, wow. Very flexible little, little gizmo. There you go. So, um, Norm, you and I have been testing new iPad minis, and Jeremy, too. Not minis for me. Oh, sorry, new iPads. Uh, you have the Air. I have the Air. I which have an Air, too. I think is... Oh, well, that's interesting. Yes. There's an I Air side and a Mini side. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what so did you far. upgrade from? Three. Well, I have the three. Mm -hmm. I would not have bought the Air. Uh, I... I, I, Gina and I went through that whole thing, and she was like, "No, it's not." We went to that. She went to the Apple store. And you talk about holding uh, holding an iPad in bed. I mean, the the three was just like. Well, she always pops it up on her legs, so and, she doesn't and, care. And that the thing the, the thing uh, for me is, if I want to buy something this year, and there's no reason you have to buy, right? Uh, just because it's available. Uh, but if I want to spend four or five hundred dollars on something, and the the biggest difference between the Air and the three is weight and size, because right. I'm using the bed, mm -hmm. then why not get the Mini with Retina? Because there's only three ounces difference. But that's 30%. Or no, it's more than no, that's 30%. 16 no. ounces. It's, 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 it's uh, less than 25%. 20, yeah, 25, 25% is a lot. It is 25. It's 25%. Yeah. yeah. Three, like, no, and four ounces would be 25%. So. It's a pound versus three quarters of a pound. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. No, 13 ounces is an ounce more than a three quarters of a pound. So. But you're also saving uh, 100 bucks. So? Well, I guess it doesn't matter to you, Lloyd. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're paying. They're playing the A Team song next door. By the way, the other reason I upgraded, in all honesty, uh, this is a this is has nothing to do with the differences in technology, but I had a 32 gigabyte um, third gen, mm -hmm. which wasn't large enough, even with the fact that you reduce AAC quality down to 256k to hold my entire music collection. So I bought a uh, big one. Th that uh, that is a valid reason, and I think a lot of people with the third gen because the third gen was in terms of the screen was such a big improvement over mm -hmm. the second gen, right. uh, max out third gens. Right. And like me, I, I thought third gen was gonna last me two years, which it has, yes. so I bought 64 gig, I bought LTE, it was the first one with cellular, mm -hmm. so I paid 130 bucks for that. Right. And to match that in getting, if I wanted to buy an Air and have those same things and mm -hmm. use the really replace the third gen, right. then I would have to get those things again, and that's then paying even more. Right. Why not use the iTunes match? Do you need your whole collection offline? 
Yes. Man, Jeremy. <laughs> well, I mean, if, 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 if I'm driving around my Phil car. Schiller over there. No, no, no. iTunes I, I, Match is like $25 a year. It it's terribly cheap, and it's so convenient. Yeah. I don't know. It's my 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 explicit albums are still What's fucked that? up because of. I guess you can't match. shuffle. You have to, yeah. Oh. You have yeah, to yeah. connection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does yeah. iTunes Match not work with uh, iTunes Radio now? Like, if you pay for iTunes Match. Yeah, it's free. It's ad free. It's ad free. So you you basically have your collection streaming. Uh, there are places where you, if when I go to Costa Rica, for example. Oh. That's that's what the original iPods uh, iPod is for. Get the classic. The classic. Um, okay, so I b- got the mini. Uh, because I, the extra three ounces does make a difference. Three and change ounces. Um, I The ability to, you know, I, I mostly use my iPad for reading. So the ability to hold it one-handed ah. comfortably like this, whether I'm standing or laying or sitting or whatever, makes all the difference right. in the world. All right. I, and see, I use a Kindle Paperwhite for reading. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I have a Kindle Paperwhite too. So in reality, I, I'll split the difference probably. Um, over the years, but if I was buying one thing and I wanted something for reading, I would buy this. I also like that I can just chuck it in the bag and it takes up some things, space. You know, and, and the iPad Air in a bag is feels real small. It, it, it's like that's that, true. The reduced bezel on the left and right makes it physically so much smaller. Do you, do you more f- so than the thickness and, and the weight? So did you feel? Yeah. Do you feel like does, it has the same thumb detection that the Mini it has, has? I but assume there's, right. It, it does not. For example, I can it's look kind up Kindle of right dependent, now. Right? It is app dependent, yeah. and Kindle app does not do it well. Oh, so you, you'll look it'll, up and all of a sudden you'll fast forward through no, like 15 apps? Back, it'll go backwards because I'm holding with my left hand. I should also add in a purely air versus mini argument, not talking about upgrading from one gen to another. Yeah. Uh, since I do a lot of gaming on my iPad, I'd like to have the little bigger screen. Um, I don't or mind. Or if you read comic books. Hmm? Or if you read comics. Or if you read comic books. Anything so, heavily graphical. So I found the comic books to be okay. Like if you look at the one I always use. Oh, he to does the panel by panel. No, I don't usually on the 7 inch. Um, I did on the mini, but I stopped reading comics when I had the mini, the original mini, basically because it was a pain in the ass. But the um, if you look at like that opening page of Lock and Key with the with the um, introduction on it, where it's all the crazy small text, uh, you could actually this one right here, you can actually read it. <laughs> I'm never gonna read. <laughs> no, that's, not that's me. ridiculous. Forget it. I'm just oh saying God. you can <laughs> read it. Stupid. <laughs> you can also zoom in. Well, yes, you'd have. To. I'd have yeah. to. Stupid. Oh um, my God. Is it much easier on an air though? You know, no, I, I would never. I don't like reading yeah. comics on the air either. Oh, I think well, you know, you com- comics, single page comics. You know what the best one is? The uh, best thing is for that. Uh, a piece of paper. A comic. The actual comic or sixteen by nine aspect ratio tablet. Oh yeah. Oh, so you'd bust out your Surface for that. Or, or uh, uh, the Nexus, Nexus 10. 10. Nexus 10. Finally, an argument for the Nexus 10. <laughs> um, I found that games have been pretty good. I played XCOM last night. The difference in performance between this and the previous generation iPad Mini, which was woefully underpowered, right. is astounding. It's oh, like, yeah. It's well, like, the previous generation iPad Mini was you know, really an right. iPhone for us. Exactly. Um, and I, I like the extra $100. After not, not an iPad 4 us, iPhone 4. 4, you're right. Sorry, yeah. 4. Like an iPad 2. It's an iPad 2. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, uh, the developer that I do some consulting with has had serious, serious compatibility issues with the iPad mini, the original one. Well, it's an iPad it's, 2, yeah. Right, and it doesn't, it, I mean, things will run fine on everything, including iPods and iPhones and iPads, then it'll crash on the mini. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, what's going on? I mean, it's not even a memory problem because some of the i pods have less memory so well the 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 mini i had was gr- like when they launched xcom which is i think probably still the most intensive thing i've played on an ipad mm-hmm. um it would run for 20 minutes and then would crash which was really bad since i started like an iron man game with that <laughs> i would lose you know it was it was bad news um that stuff all seems better like i uh, xcom was super playable kotor seemed pretty good um and well, uh, th- th- this mini is actually a mini iPad. It's not yeah. something different. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a hundred dollars cheaper, but lower battery capacity. Right. Yeah, I haven't. So that's the place I haven't been. Well, they still say that's the same number of hours, though, don't they? Y- the yes, website? but if you're doing something like using it as a hotspot and using it to power for something else, mm-hmm. then you want the higher capacity. I I um as long as it lasts during a, a, a you know as long as I don't have to charge it in the middle of the day, right. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. That's my. That's my cutoff for that. If I need something to read that's going to last longer than one day, I'll just bring my Kindle. Right. So I re- thi- oh, sorry. I, I really like the Mini. I, it's like the iPad that I wanted ever since. Well, when the Mini came out, I missed the Retina display, but I used it more often than any iPad for the scale. So finally, they have the the Mini 
retina, retina, which is finally exactly what I want. I do wish that this is n you know picking. Uh, it's a small small thing, but I do wish that it was as heavy or as light as the original mini. You can tell the difference. Yeah, you you can immediately feel a difference in white. What is the difference in white between the original and the it's it's a um, if you give me a second, I'll look. But I think it's it's a, a two dozen grams or something. Okay, um, an ounce basically. Uh, it's I'm less not a than an ounce. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, Norm, you've also been tested. I'll, I'll look that up. But Speaking Norm, of things that don't last all day in terms of battery life, uh, Nexus 5. Yeah, so... Which I've been uh, a little disappointed with. I actually realized what has been draining its battery for the past three days. Which was? Uh, I, I can save that for when I write it up because I'm experimenting whether it actually... Oh, is you're confirming. Effect. So it is um, 308 grams for the Wi-Fi model versus 330 grams. So it's mm -hmm. 331 grams. So it's like 20, 23 grams. Um, or zero five point zero five pounds, five hundredths of a pound. Is that right? How many ounces? There's four hundred and sixty grams say ounces. in a pound. Four fifty four. It says point seven three pounds versus point six eight pounds. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And point three millimeters thicker. Yeah, the thickness I didn't notice at all, but the weight you. I mean, if you're holding both, you can tell which one's which by the weight. Don't get the LTE. Um, that's right. even. That's even heavier. I did. The, oh. the extra radio is more weight. Uh, Nexus five. Um, How do you like it? Are you? Is this your new phone? Are you getting rid of the well, HTC One? It is one? my new phone because I'm reviewing it. Uh, but I'm definitely not getting rid of the HTC One. Um, uh, it, it mostly is an experiment in KitKat, in which the HTC One will get uh, soon. And uh, I've been so far. Uh, I like the camera image quality, but as Jeremy pointed out, the uh, the shutter speed is slow, and mm. now now I can't not notice it. Um, Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> Um, I, I, it's I not, not the shutter speed. It's the amount of time it takes between when you hit the sure. button and it takes yeah. a picture. The, yeah. the, the shutter, shutter lag. Yeah. Shutter, shutter lag, lag. Yeah. Yeah. So the one thing I do like about that phone is the screen is real close to the surface, it seems like, just like the HTC One and One X. It's better on the HTC One's screen is better than this one, even though this is slightly bigger. Uh, same resolution, but I think the HTC One, the, the color temperature is better on that one. That's something I was bummed about on the iPad Mini Retina. I wish that the screens were, were closer to the top. By the way, um, can we and turn back to photography air. for just a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah why not? It's that, it's well, that episode. We're just going right. back. The other reason for, for, have to go back. for camera Lost. choices, by the way, is what kind of photography you do. Mm -hmm. uh, back when I originally started with Nikon, I was shooting indoor sports and nighttime sports. Okay. Where you need big, fast glass, and, as well as fast autofocus. I mean, it's really important. And now I'm shooting more landscapes and close-ups and stuff like that. that. That's a big difference. And so if I was still shooting indoor sports, I would probably have stuck with DSLRs. So so just by virtue of the things that you have shot changed because your kids have gone to college, right. your 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 needs in a camera have changed. Right. That makes sense. It's um, funny because my camera w has relatively slow autofocus in the world of high-end DSLRs with only one phase, uh, one cross-type sensor and 11 total uh, phase phase of focus points. Yeah, but points. when you're doing action stuff, you just want to turn on only s only the single autofocus point. Anyway. I just do the center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Nexus Five, Norm, we'll, we'll do a video for it next week. Um, two weeks from now. I pointed we'll out the, sh two weeks the now, shutter yeah. lag, but I also pointed out that that phone is all about price. Uh, yeah, so it's 350 bucks for off contract. If you're on T-Mobile and you in T-Mobile, and I think all the carriers now have some type of uh, like co off contract subscription model now. Or some fast upgrade phone plan at least. Uh, T-Mobile has the no contract, you know, pay as you go model. Uh, throwing those SIM cards in here, if you could, this this will last you two years, and three hundred fifty bucks is a good price to pay for a phone for two years. Definitely. Um, anything else? What we've been testing? I lo I love my MacBook. I swear uh, to God, it's the you got the Haswell MacBook. I am nuts about it. Like the, I'm way more crazy retina? about it than even the iPad Mini. Yeah, I got the new yeah, MacBook Pro, 13 inch wow. MacBook Pro. Has performance with the with the integrated graphics. Crazy! It's awesome. Have you played games? Um, what did I play? I feel like I got something on Steam. But what I've been doing is developing I've been okay. in, in Unity, and I'm replacing. I'm I didn't even know I could do this, but it it supports dual monitors plus its own monitor. And more with more power and and grace than the iPad Mini that that I bought you know a year ago, and the, like the iPad Mini would to be chuggy and there'd be choppiness and it would turn the fan on. This you thing, mean the MacBook Air? Uh, no, no, no. I, I had a. I'm sorry, sorry. I meant the Mac Mini. Okay. So I, I had a Mac Mini <laughs> that um, 
<laughs> you know, it just had a horrible fan. Every time it would uh, develop on it, it would, you know, the CPU would crank up and it would. Well, Unity's kind of a CPU hog, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, it's, it, as it should be. But it's on the MacBook, it's just, you know, it's no problem now, at all. Now, which port is this 13 Yeah. That's got the Iris, not Iris Pro, is that right? Yeah. I think it's just straight Iris. Could be wrong. Which is still pretty damn good for yeah. integration. I don't even know what that is, but thank goodness it's in there because it's. Yeah, Intel, Intel 5000. Basically, uh, it's an additional what Intel calls a slice, so it's got a bunch of extra graphical execution units. And that one has the the screen that's what is it faking? It's faking thirteen six six by seven six eight by doubling that. I thought it was nineteen twenty by. I thought it was ten eighty doubled. No. No, no, no. On 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 the thirteen, I don't think so. Uh, that's my problem with those laptops. Uh, is that because you have to do pixel doubling? Yeah. The 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 resolution, the DPI on the on the icons is still too big. Um, and it's uh, 2560 by 1600. Right, so it's faking 1280 by whatever, 800. 800. Um, and I can't work on a screen that's 1280 by 800. Hmm. Do you, just b- because of the number of windows that are available. Number, uh, yeah, and what, what like, websites look like. Yeah, yeah, 2560 by 1600, so it's 1280 by 800. I will run that native. I mean, I, I hook it up to dual monitors, so it's, it's great. Um. You want to talk about anything else we've been testing? I, I bought some board games. The other day. Amazon had a board game sale last week. Ah, what did you get? <gasps> Norm. Okay, no, no, go, go ahead. I have some board game stuff to talk about. I bought um, Forbidden I, uh, Forbidden Desert. Desert, yep, uh-huh. Because um, I think we had talked about it, and you said, mm-hmm. yeah, it's between Pandemic and Forbidden Island, which sounds right. perfect to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also bought the la- the last Dominion expansion. Okay. Uh, which is, I guess, Guilds. Which I didn't get. I didn't get the last two Dominion expansions. I, I bought... I got I, I got to a point with Dominion where I just figured yeah. I went off from having them all, so I might as well just collect them all, yeah, Pokemon I I style. Prosperity. prosperity was the, one of the best ones, yeah. I thought. Yeah. Um, Dark Ages was okay. It's the one between, mm-hmm. and I haven't played Guilds yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I also got a copy of Love Letter, and I've been trying to get that Ladies and Gentlemen game, but since they mentioned it on Penny Arcade, it got crazy expensive, <laughs> and I think it's probably out of print now, right. so I'm sure they'll make another run. The game that I got that I haven't had a chance to play yet is the Firefly board game. Oh, yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. Um, did and we the, talk about it on Octobercast? I think we might have. Yeah, maybe. And then uh, the other game I've been playing a little bit is Yido. I haven't played that. Y-E-D-O. Uh, and it's basically... Uh, have you played uh, Lords of Waterdeep? I have not, but I've watched people play okay, it. Okay, so it's Lords of Waterdeep, but a little bit deeper and with a samurai theme. Mm. So uh, set in 16th century feudal Japan as a theme and it's it's it actually works very very well it's really nice if you want people who have been playing Mortal Arts of Waterdeep and want something a little bit more strategic and a little bit deeper and a little more thematic because it actually things like the the descriptions on the cards and stuff are much you know more in theme as opposed to you know do this quest you have yeah. big descriptions of who's involved and all that kind of stuff and you read it out loud and it's great fun um, I've been playing a ton of Pandemic since it came out for iPad Ah, okay. that that is a perfect play by yourself on the iPad game because you control all four people. There's no multiplayer. Right. I mean, there's pass and play multiplayer. There was no network multiplayer, right. either local or internet, which is a huge mm-hmm. bummer. But it is uh, that game is rad. Yeah, I've been playing Warhammer Quest on the iPad. Uh, is that a, I didn't know that was out. Yes, it's uh-huh. been out for a while. I'll have it's, to check it out. It's, it's pretty awesome. Kind of, it's you when you play it, you're thinking you're playing a light RPG, and you kind of are, but it's really based on the Warhammer Quest board game from like 15 years ago. Okay, uh, Norm, you had. Board yes, game news. Uh, Saturday night I played two games of Fleet Captains, Aha-ha! Star Trek Fleet Captains. Is that, yes. the, is that the miniatures game? It is yes, a miniature it is game. one of the miniatures games. Not the one that you were talking about the, that has the scaled ships on the Star Wars No, no, Wars you're side? talking about the one with the, little, with the, with the tile boards, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you brought in a Millennium Falcon. Uh, that's a different game. That's yes. a different that's game. That's X-Wing. Well, that w- right, but th- that's there's a com- well, there's, there's a Star, Star Trek version, version of that, of that yeah. too, oh, okay. scaled it's ships. Star Trek Attack Wing, which is... right. Doesn't, the name doesn't make any sense. Well, this one's name. called Fleet Captains, yes. and it's it pretty is awesome. Awesome, because you got this exploration thing going. Oh. But the two sides, or three sides, if you have the expansion, have different goals. So it's a lot so like Starfleet multiple, Command. Is each player playing a side, it's or are there multiple base. players in the side? You don't one v one. In the, in you, okay. you can have teams if you want, but really, it's you, you really want to play one player per side. Okay. So one v one, one team plays as Federation, one team plays as Klingon. Uh, it's a lot like that game Starfleet Command from Interplay on, oh, yeah. on PC. Uh, way back in the day, uh, turn base and like Lloyd said, you have this uh, map that's ra- all the randomized. tiles are face down. They're hex start. maps. Oh, so you, you have, have to ships, explore, yes. and you flip them over as you explore, and you have ship sizes, and then you have crew that you you, you brought put this onto into the, the ships. into the old office. Yes, yes, 
And the thing about this game is that you have to, the different types of different goals. So the, the Klingons will get more points for being aggressive and attacking people, whereas the, the Federation side gets more points for doing things like exploring and, and, and allying. It's a game perfectly suited for that universe right. that allows you to have fun while you're playing the game as a board game, right. tabletop game, but also to allow you to immerse yourself in like the role-playing of yes, that universe. That's right. How and long the, does it run? It can be a pretty long game. The first game took an hour and a half. second game took three hours. Yeah. Ooh. And then one the, the expansion adds Romulans. So you actually have a third side, and they have even slightly... You would think they'd be, they're in the Klingons would be fairly similar, but they actually are more about sneaky and stealth and stuff like that. Uh, so. Interesting. Okay. Um, I think we're going to skip questions today because we're running kind of late, uh, but we will pick this one up next week. We had a, we had a couple of good ones. Uh, Lloyd, anything to plug this week? Nope, not much. Uh, you're at Lloyd Case on Twitter? Right. Jeremy Williams, anything to plug this week? How, nope. how goes your Tron adventure? The Tron adventure? What are you the, talking about? You know, the the grid. grid? The grid. The game frame. Sorry, Thank the game frame. Uh, have you given mine? Have you given that no, away yet? No, it's that's October tomorrow. And donations end today, end of day today. Oh, no, they end Friday tomorrow. morning, I think, oh. end of day. I don't know. Well, oh. They may or may not still be running by the time you listen to this. Go to tested.com slash Octobercast to find out all the, all the stuff you can win. We're going to do the raffle drawing probably tomorrow afternoon or Monday, depending on when the, the donations close. Um, so far, we've raised more than thirty-two thousand dollars. That be last year? Uh, Just yes, last year. Last year was about the same. Yeah, All right. we're we're even, which is fine. Um, I think Gary's the habanero money put us over the top from last year, probably. So, so thanks, Gary. Um, I think. Oh, 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 games, 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 games. Real quick, I heard about this game called Oh, jeez, I can't. It's an auction game, and I forget the uh, uh, basically. You know, Gary's game. Quote, space rocks. rocks? Yes. Oh my god. This, no, why are you bringing up space rocks? <laughs> Just don't impassive. encourage him. This game, well, he may have to stop because this game is sort of an auction game, but it has strong similarities to space rocks. It's a real-time auction game where you have these cups Wait, in the middle. No. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh. It, 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 uh, uh, and you're sitting there and then when the action starts, you're sitting there, you have like a timer and you're bidding by throwing you have money, or your little kids you're bidding by bidding on these things by throwing and it's all happening in real time and you're sort of fighting for stuff and then when the timer goes out, you then count and see who wins and it and it's in terms of the way the thing plays out from what I've seen, it's like, you know, a non-violent version of Space Rocks in, in wow. I don't think it's possible Space Rocks <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> The risk reward of space rocks was that when you get a rock, you can choose to use that rock to throw it at someone else and get their rocks, or keep it yourself. I think. I think. Let's not ever mention space rocks again, and maybe <laughs> we'll all forget that it ever happened. Um, and I guess that'll do it for us this week. Jeremy, you're Jeremy Williams on Google Plus. Yeah, I guess I'm the only guy in the world that uses Google Plus, though. So I am Jareware on Twitter. Oh, you I'm, have a Twitter? <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 I'm also on, on Google Plus. Not, I don't post all that often, but occasionally. Lloyd Case. Still. Now that YouTube comments are tied to Google Plus, the tested Google Plus account is crazy active. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, I like, I'm the only person out there in the world, I think, but I am really excited that they have changed Google YouTube comments and ruined them by tying them to Google Plus. Because the tools for banning people are much better now than they ever have been before. Well, I am one of those rare people who like the idea of, of uh, in certain environments and communities, not having anonymity. Accountability. I think yeah. that YouTube, I think the, the people on YouTube lost their ability. They lost their, their, privilege. You, their privilege of anonymity, uh, anonymity uh, years ago with all the horrible things that they posted. So I'm okay with no anonymity on YouTube also. Um, and I guess that'll do it for us this week. Uh, Norm, anything you want to talk about? Uh, we posted our video today of uh, the final video from Atlanta, uh, visiting Ford Beezers. Didn't uh, you go to Atlanta in like September? We went to Atlanta at the end of August. Wow. Labor Day weekend uh, for Dragon Con uh, and visited the workshop of a guy who repairs World War II turrets. He's one of the only people oh, yeah, in the that world was awesome who does these. that. Yeah. Um, and it, it was like it was the like turrets from ball turrets war, war, and fighters and from bombers, bombers, and does he do like the back turrets from like P thirty sevens or P thirty eights and stuff like that he has, too? He has thousands and thousands of parts he's been collecting over thirty years. Hold on, is he part of the Confederate Air Force thing where they redo old airplanes? To no, okay, just turrets. He's just, just turrets. Tur he's the turret guy. And uh, turrets are fascinating because it was a technology invented right before World War II mm -hmm. and then quickly made obsolete right after World War II because, because of missiles. Of jets. Yeah. Because you couldn't shoot jets. Uh, the coolest anecdote from that video, which you should all watch, is that uh, when gunners were sitting in the turrets, there was an analog computer in the turret. 
that was attached to in the the body of the the bomber had like the actual big analog computers that would calculate the lead time for where the turret would oh, it was like the aim. little little computer in the st- in, in the Millennium Falcon turret, just like that, yeah. <laughs> except that uh, the the gunner would have a radio that, to talk to the pilot, and the pilot would relay the speed the the. Uh, so all, you have to key in speeds, and you key in your altitude, your all. Your, the, the gunner will key that into the computer as they're firing, and then looking through a sight, they would get like a lead dot. So, so they would shoot. It, oh, that's terrifying! As it, it, all in the heat of combat. So when you when you were a kid and you watched like Memphis Bell or something like that, and you saw the guys in the belly turret of the B seventeen. That looked like the coolest job ever. You got machine guns, and you were hanging out over open space. And yet it's like, yeah, we're in most, one of the most dangerous positions on a bomber. It's the, like, <laughs> bombers were real high up in the list, right up there with submarines and like you know forward infantry guys as the most dangerous places along, to be. Along the lines of worst idea ever was uh, we were flying on an airliner once when they showed Memphis Bell. You know, and I thought that was a terrible oh, movie that's not to a, show yeah, no. on an airliner. No, that's not good. It's like the the movie about the. Trade Center plane too, United. yeah, United Forty Nine or whatever. Wow, never forget, Will. I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm bad with numbers. It's well established. 93. I can't. Ninety three. Thank you. I knew there was a nine in there. Um, okay. Better hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I call me down. Get it wrong. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, as always, uh, like us, review us on iTunes, leave comments, let us know what you think about the show. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Oh. Wait, today's outro is brought to you by KJN. Hi there, I didn't see you. That's it. Oh shit, I'm getting a speeding ticket. That's it.